Acting weird. Oh, there we go. Shit. Well, now it started recording. Okay. <laughs> Something seems to be up with my recording things. Whatever. Hey, it's episode like... 102 of the Shut Your Mouth Lounge. I'm Alex. Addy's here as well. And there's, a, there's also a pink. Hey there. And a soon. Hey, what's up? And I apparently need to delete some videos off my backlog here, because that might be why that's causing the OBS to be a little confused. Mm. We've got some actual podcast topics today. First up's one that's gonna be we're gonna rely on soon here, because I'm gonna assume I'm gonna assume not not soon, pink. God. I will never <laughs> not I will never not confuse names here. I'm gonna assume pink has the lowdown on this one. New, right. New operators for Rainbow Six Siege. I see a sniper. So to yes. tell us all about it soon. <laughs> yes, yeah, soon you've got the most experience out of all of us here. Give us the lowdown. Wait for what? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's the correct answer. Take us away, Pink, to a magical land of dreams. All right. So the new operators for Rainbow Six Siege coming in the final season of this year. Operation, what is it called? Shifting Tides yes. will introduce Who Am I, New Defender, and Kali, the new attacker. I assume Kali... the sniper is an attacker. What's that? I assume the sniper is an attacker. Uh, yes. Okay. So we'll we'll start with the attacker, if that's all right with you. Yes. She seems to be the one they're advertising. Yeah. She, she is, in fact, in the thumbnail. So yeah. Kali has a bolt-action sniper rifle. And it is so powerful that one body shot will instantly down anybody. Oh. This is a mechanic in the game. Yeah, also... It, also it doesn't she's... matter what armor, what speed, what obstacles are in the way. If you get a body shot with Kali, you're instantly downed. Yeah, the thing that I that amazed me was that if you shoot someone and somebody stands be behind them, they also get shot. Yes. That that in any other game that wouldn't be important, but in Siege that's actually pretty big. Mm-hmm. So I assume that is that just her gadget? No, her gadget, in addition to the big ass sniper rifle, is kind of like an ash charge. But not really. It will drill into like a soft wall or reinforced wall and explode, have a small explosion on both ends that will take out gadgets on the opposing side of the wall. But only gadgets. Only gadgets. It doesn't do any real damage to defenders or attackers. So it's an anti bandit thing. Yes. It's a lot like a Thatcher EMP with a smaller area of effect. Okay, can it, it gets through reinforced walls, right? Yes. So yeah, it, it's against bandit and mute, basically. Yeah. The only way to destroy her, uh, I I don't remember what they call. It. Well, I'll just call them their her charges. The only way to destroy them is to shoot them from the back end. So that is probably not going to happen a lot, because you know if you're on the inside. You're not going to be able to come around out the backside real quick to take out the dorsal fin of the thing. The the thing that here that gets me is that that has no it doesn't really have much correlation with her whole thing of being the sniper. Is this one of those odd things where the sniper is so strong that they don't want the rest of her kit to coincide with it? I'm going to tentatively disagree here. To me, looking at Kali, I think it's all support. She's not going to really be a fragger like uh, Glaz was in his prime. Because the fire rate on her sniper is so slow. So I see her being the most useful in the very back line. Using her special gadget to take out the, as you said, the bandit charges or the mute jammers in order for their Thatcher to break through the reinforced walls, and then she can take out whoever she can from the back lines as well. So what you're saying is she will play like an actual sniper? Yes. This is the most sniper of them all. 
Because they've been trying desperately to tweak Glaz into an actual sniper, but all they've really been doing is nerfing him into the ground to where n nobody actually plays him because he's just not good compared to literally anybody else. The trouble being, of course, that he basically... His thing just being that he gets to see through smoke makes him actually a very, very aggressive forward operator. Right. Which the but, does not apply to Warden. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Warden's they thing they will nerfed be his ability to see through smoke, so that's why his pick rate and win rate has gone down drastically. Oh, he can no longer see through smoke? He can if he's staying still. If he moves then his there's a little icon on the side that tells you how much or how clear you'll be able to see through smoke. So if you're moving around, you won't be able to see through smoke at all. The players won't be outlined in their yellow like normal. It won't be a thermal vision scope anymore. It'll just be a normal scope with discoloration. So he's trash now. Yeah, he's absolute trash now. Because like him having to look down the scope was in itself something of a nerf. Because he has no mm. peripheral vision while he's doing it. If someone runs mm -hmm. into him in the smoke, they just knife him. Mm -hmm. Someone at Siege doesn't... Someone at Ubisoft here doesn't really understand how to balance some of these characters. Yeah. They've People... completely screwed the pooch with Glass because once they realized they had done him so terribly, they decided to give him frag grenades to hope to up his pick and win rate which actually doesn't work because when his primary ability is the ability to see through smoke and you're giving him the option to pick between a frag grenade or a smoke grenade, it doesn't work out. <laughs> Somebody at Ubisoft is really shit at freaking balancing just in general because from what I've heard, I actually didn't, didn't, haven't played with the new character from Four Honor yet, but from what I've heard, they basically released a new character that can't do shit. You they said are there, that about the there, last one too. What? The Hitokiri, yeah, the hit, but the Hitokiri was supposed to have at least, you know, like one or two broken feet. I'm not even he hearing about that with this one. It's just they look cool. It's basically Arabusha if Arabusha was released today. I don't even remember the new Chinese I don't even hero. Remember who the new one is? Because the last one I was the last one, Yormungandr or Hitokiri? I forget which one came first. Yormungandr. Okay, so the last one was Yormungandr, and this one is. I don't know their name. Okay. It's, it's the Chinese one. The Chinese double swordsman. Right, right. I, I Is this swear, a double swordsman? Wait, 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 wait. Did you say he's a Chinese hero who doesn't fucking stomp? Yeah. No, in, in fact, he, he doesn't stomp, stomp so much that he just basically stands there menacingly. According to people, anyway. Not, not even in the Guan Yu way. No, not even in the Guan Yu way. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Let's hear about the other siege operator, the defense one. So, Wamai is basically a new introduction to sort of balance out all the Jaeger picks, because I know I've shown you guys the pick and win rates in the past, and Jaeger is always top picked. Because I think the last one I posted, they had to extend the little pick rate thing to put his head at the very end there. Yeah, so, which I thought was fucking weird because I thought Jaeger was trash. No, Jaeger is fantastic. He's got great guns and his utility is one of the best on the defender side in the entire game. And that's why we're getting a new Jaeger. Okay, that the utility was where I got caught. Because I agree that he's got great guns, but his utility was just like, oh, he stops grenades. Uh, that's great against Fuse. <laughs> Though, how, many, how many people now have kits based around grenades? Because I don't know. There aren't uh, any abilities outside of the typical fuse, ying, and etc. I, I want to say fuse, ying, Zofia, and probably one other that I'm forgetting, maybe more. But a, a lot of other operators, operators have also been given frag grenades or stun grenades in recent uh, updates. Huh. Alright. So but to me, uh, Jaeger has always been a top tier pick because that ability to prevent 
your sight from being covered in stun or smoke or even just typical frag grenades is too much of a good utility to say no to. In my opinion, you should probably always have a Jaeger because his job is very simple. He puts down his ADSs, and, and then because he's got the great guns, he can roam, he can anchor, he can go run off and spawn peek, whatever he wants to do. It doesn't matter because at the start of the round, his job should already be done. Yeah. Well, my differs in this way because his is an active use. It's a lot like uh, Legion's goo mines where, where they will generate over time. So he has single use, basically uh, single use ADSs that he can throw around the map, but they regenerate over the course of the round. Huh. All right, that's interesting. Now, do you think there's a chance that we might just end up with a, a new meta where people just pick both? I think it's high because they've given uh, Wamai the AUG that IQ has, which is a decent weapon. I think it looks hideous, though, so I never use it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a, I'm a I'm an LMG user with IQ just because it cracks me up. She's so tiny and she uses an LMG. Right. So I use the assault rifle because SMGs suck. They take five whole years to reload, <laughs> and, I, and I'm obsessed with reloading. Apparently. What like revolver ocelot? Yes. No <laughs> My favorite part of the part of a battle is reloading. There's nothing like the feeling of slamming a long silver bullet down a well-greased chamber. Anyways, hey, Andy Serkis is going to be Alfred in the new Batman movie. Oh, I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Weird pick, but I'm interested in it. Like, if they're aiming for a younger Batman, then having a younger Alfred that's, like, fresh out of his... Well, not rel relatively fresh out of his commando years makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Cir Circus is a... Circus is a guy that looks short, but at the same time, he certainly looks tough. Yeah, he does. Like, there's a reason he worked so well as that kind of weird South African warlord. And, and he worked pretty well as, like, Caesar from uh, the, the ape movies. I, I've never watched those because I think they're stupid. But the <laughs> but like he does come across as intimidating, and it, the monkey basically has its face. So I, I have seen the pictures, yeah, and there is a notable resemblance, particularly that nose. Wait, yeah. is this the guy who played Gollum? This is Gollum, yes. All yes, right, Gollum. I thought I thought he he was his name was freaking ringing a bell. Basically, the guy who does every CGI monster in the entirety of Hollywood. Uh, well, there's Doug Jones as well. Doug Jones does a lot. Yeah, but like... Oh, and Benedict Cumberbatch does a lot, too. Yeah, he does. That, that... Weirdly enough. I, I Also, probably the most... Now tying with Gollum, the most famous CGI character is Thanos, which was Josh Brolin. Yeah, that's true. But, yeah, this is... It's kind of a... Odd kind of, like, complete career resurrection for Andy Serkis we've been seeing just in the last yeah. few years. Yeah, he's gotten really, really big. Because when he was Gollum, everyone was like, look at this guy, he's acting, but he's like looks like something else because he's a CG creature. And everyone was like, oh, that's cool. But nobody really gave him more roles. But then, like, you know, Planet of the Apes happened, and suddenly it was everyone just was like, holy shit, he's a really fucking good actor who can do more than just Golem. Yep. So now everyone wants to grab him, understandably. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't quite he doesn't quite fit my mental image of Alfred, but then again, nah. a, a lot of the casting choices here haven't. Like, Jeffrey uh, White... Alfred will, Alfred will be like an old bat creature. That's why they, they hired him. <sighs> Shut up. The Jeffrey Wright, like, we didn't talk about him because, you know, I try not to overflow pink with poor, with Batman, but... <laughs> yeah. Jeffrey Wright, also not really my mental image for Gordon. He's got the personality down, absolutely. But, like, f the physicality, you know. Zoe Kravitz. Ah, she's... 
As Catwoman? As Catwoman, yes. I think she's solo she casting. Okay. She wants what's to get away from that with, like, What's the deal with Catwoman being cast as, like, mixed race? Catwoman... Oh. Lately. It, well, here, the thing is... Like, there was Halle Berry, and now there's Zoe Kravitz. And there's Anne Hathaway as well. Yeah, Anne Hathaway. The I thing, always forget that, yeah. The thing is, like, a big part of the public identity of Batman is still the 60s TV show. And the 60s yeah. show flipped wildly between the uh, white Catwoman, Julie Newmar, and uh, Eartha Kitt as Catwoman. Who the hell is Paul Dano? Oh, Paul Dano. Uh, did you watch There Will Be Blood with Daniel, Daniel Day-Lewis? No. Uh, let's see. Did you he watch? has... He definitely looks like the Riddler. Paul, Paul Dano is great casting. I yeah. think so far it's been... He has a really punchable great... face. Well, yeah, he's got the face, certainly, and... It... <laughs> If you see any of his roles, he plays the arrogant shit heel coward very, very well. Like, I know Addy's going to disagree with me on this, but I also think Robert Pattinson will make a good Batman. So I think I mean Robert Pattinson is a really good actor. So well, yeah, I mean he hated being in Twilight, so he's got taste. <laughs> <laughs> Have you not seen any of his recent stuff? No, but I've been tempted to see the one with Willem Dafoe. Oh, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to my girlfriend, who doesn't believe that he's a good actor. Oh. <laughs> I guess it's a European thing. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> the the they did uh, announce an unannounced a completely new actress for a unannounced role, but she is a like young, like maybe teenage black woman, which makes me think Barbara Gordon. I mean, maybe. Oh, uh, wait. Barbara Gordon? Yeah. Okay, I guess that makes sense. I mean... Because I mean, Jeffrey Wright. Yeah. Like, they haven't had the appearance down for all these roles, but I think they've been getting, like, the kind of personality and the character energy down. Yeah, that's fair. Which is, certain, is a certain perspective to take, certainly. I don't know how many people there are that fit the look of Gordon in Hollywood. Because, I mean, there's there's Gary Oldman, obviously, who's done it before, but I don't think they should recast Gary Oldman in that role. And J.K. No. Simmons has went back to Marvel. So, I mean, who's left? Wait, Colin I forgot J.K. Simmons was Gordon once. Yeah. Colin Farrell is was he? talks to be Penguin? That is not good casting. No, it isn't, but thankfully it's just what? a rumor. It was rumored right. that Colin Farrell would be Penguin and that Matthew McConaughey would be Two Face, both of which are awful casting choices. Oh yeah, I I really like I really hope they don't do some weird thing like having a really buff fit Penguin. Hey, oh my god, I, I'm sick. You have the veto again. Fitness instructor Penguin. I, I'm sick of fit. <laughs> I'm sick of skinny tall Penguin. I am. I really am. What are your What are your feel, feelings on freaking? Just um, like what was it? Uh, like rich British penguin from the Telltale games. <laughs> that one, Telltale was trying to do something wildly different. And if you're just outright yeah. saying like we're not gonna be doing Batman here, we're gonna be doing our own thing that's just partially Batman, that's like fine. Yeah, I, Telltale was very very different. Like Telltale Joker was an entire new like different dimension. Yeah, like Joker. Joker and the Telltale could literally become a good guy at the end. Yeah, you can make Joker a good guy. Not only that, you can make him Bruce Wayne's best friend. Yep. That's the wild thing. That that, that, that game's fucking nuts. Vicky Vale is Batman's nemesis in those fucking games. Vicky Vale. Yep. I mean, the, the news is evil, so... Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> if they're going... Oh, did you guys hear that Telltale is getting revived? Yes. I don't know if we talked it's, it's about got, that before. It's got debugged. It, I think. It is getting revived, but the notable thing is that the people, the original Telltale guys they brought in, are only being brought in as consultants. <laughs> hmm. So it might be Telltale's name slapped on a much cheaper studio that's probably better at producing games <laughs> using the Telltale yeah. formula, but using people who actually don't suck at their jobs. Hopefully the games don't look like shit anymore. I mean... Also, 
the Telltale developers didn't suck at their jobs. It was the fact that lead management rushed them on everything and forced them to put out half-baked productions so that they could get on as many games out as possible. That is true. So it was all management. The developers could have been really talented. And they probably honestly were really talented story writers. They just were rushed too much. As some of the stories were like, who who is even doing it? Like, season three of Walking Dead was just a fucking train oh, yeah. wreck. Which yeah. one was that? The one with the muertos? Yes. Yes, I agree. <laughs> like, I've not yeah, I... looked into season four at all because of season three. Yeah, I didn't even get through, like, the first episode of season three. It was really bad. Like, see, see, only... season yeah. two started off well and then kind of got worse with every episode, I'd say. Mm -hmm. So we already weren't on a good road, and then season three was like, hey, you know Clementine? Fuck her. Here's Miguel. And it's like, yeah. who the fuck is Miguel? Like, why the fuck would I care about this new character? I mean... Yeah, I the, the one thing that season three might have done right, I'm not sure, was bringing freaking, uh, like, zo zombie murderer Jesus, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the one thing everybody says, like, hey, Jesus is here at least, so hey. He's fucking doing drop kicks and wrestling moves on the zombies. <laughs> like, he, he's just wildly out of place in the rest of the game because everyone else in Walking Dead Season 3 is just the biggest loser who sucks at their job and has a gigantic klutz who will betray anyone else at a drop of a hat. Oh, and here's Jesus. He's a downright saintly good person. He's a pacifist who refuses to kill people. He does fucking wrestling moves on zombies. He's Bruce fucking Lee. Like, wh wh why is Jesus even putting up with these people? Jesus should just go out and be himself. Ah, uh, which... I think he did just wind up leaving for the show anyway, so, you know. Yeah. He glinned out. Later, fuckers. I'm gonna have to go get my head caved in. Alright. Okay. <sighs> Who's ready for the topic of debate today? I don't know Wait, whether what's... this is going to be a universal agreement thing or not. What's the topic of debate? Okay, so... Apparently, in some capacity, Punk it, CM Punk is back with the WWE. Why? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Folks asked him nicely, and he saw the money. There were probably dollar signs thrown around, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely sounds like a Triple H thing. I don't think so, because from everything that I've been hearing leading up into this, is that Fox has been the big company that's been trying to get Punk back. It's not really been a WWE-centered decision. Okay. Fox. Yeah, what I what I heard was that Punk is not um, signed to WWE. He's actually signed to Fox, and Fox is just forcing him, forcing him to put up in the WWE. Okay, I haven't uh, heard about that. Wait, like he's he, he's tied to Fox? Like yeah. I thought Fox doesn't really have anything except their news now, right? Disney bought everything else. I do not know anything about all this. All I heard was that yeah. Punk made his return on this weird, dippy WWE backstage show. Ugh. Yeah, I, I don't know anything either. And that's, that's, just, that's just what I've heard, was that Fox, Fox is the, the people pulling, pulling Punk's strings for now. Well, I did hear Fox was a big part of it, but I didn't hear that Punk was under contract to them instead of WWE. Mm, that's interesting. But I mean, for my part here, has anyone else seen the clip where he comes back? Nope. nope. Didn't even I've probably seen a gif of it. Because that, that's some stuff of, like, you know, a routine reminder why I don't watch WWE anymore. Cause <laughs> what it, happened? It, it's the just the cringiest stuff of Renee Young out, and she's just talking and saying, oh, another wonderful debut on WWE's part. So-and-so, WWE continues to outdo itself, you know. There you go, you're doing cutting promos for itself, you know, that whole thing, through Renee Young as a channel. And in yep. the background, they've got Booker T, who looks like he's slowly dying. Samoa Joe, who looks like he, he doesn't is. Know, <laughs> Samoa Joe, who looks like he doesn't know where he is. Adam Cole. He who, doesn't. Adam Cole, who's just happy to be there. <laughs> he's not. 
Page. <laughs> He's not. <laughs> Page. Who put me on this show? Paige, who is dancing for some reason, and she's doing, like, the worst it, white girl dances. It's the only thing she can she's, do now. She's still high. <laughs> yeah. The, the, I'm pretty sure the only only re reason that Paige is still under contract with the WWE is so Dario won't kill her. And then Renee Young's like, we got one last thing for everybody. It's a big, like, pipe bomb. She says something like, it's a big pipe bomb or something stupid. Oh. And fucking, fucking, you know, Cult of Personality starts playing. And everyone acts all surprised with quite possibly the worst acting I've seen in wrestling in forever. Punk comes and out. And Colt Cabana comes out. Yeah, I'd, <laughs> I'd fucking pay to see that. <laughs> Punk comes to the ring. And Punk has quite possibly the most stilted body language I've ever seen. And Punk comes out and he's got, you know, that typical smarmy Punk look on his face of, yeah, I did it. And Punk comes out and he's like, oh, so-and-so, oh, revolution, blah, 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 change everything, blah, 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 break the program, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, fuck me. Yeah, WWE this, is just so trash. It like, is so bad. For curiosity's sake, sake, Pink, in the last ten years, how many times has WWE claimed to have an era change? Too many. Too, too many. Because every... Uh -oh. When I go to Would check, did it start with like Nexus? Well, I think they tried to claim Nexus was an era change. They definitely yeah. claimed like Roman Reigns was an era change. They might have claimed yeah. CM Punk's pipe bomb was an era change. Yep. Definitely. I don't. I want to say we had an era change in 2010, 11. There was also like the 2009 thing where they had like celebrities come and guest host Raw. I would consider that a uh, era, but they never. WWE itself never touted it as an era. I think we've had an era change for every every year since like at least 2014. And like WWE classifies it as such. Oh, there was definitely Daniel Bryan with the Yes movement. Yeah. I mean, what, what I'm what I mean here is that WWE classifies things on eras, right? There's the Golden Age with Hogan, then yeah. there's the New Era with Bret. There's the Stone. Where's the Attitude Era? There's Ruthless Aggression. Then there's what we called the PG era, which then the PG era is like divvied up into ten different eras, and mm, like yeah, call I would say that the PG era did eventually go away, like, and now we're in like the indie area era. I Absolutely, I the area. Yes, that's the that's the new era's name. <laughs> the indie <laughs> area around Indiana somewhere. <laughs> yeah, the indie era. Yeah, I would say that there's only really been two eras there. Yeah. But, like, they have the dumbest classifications for it, too, because it's stuff like the WWE Universe era, the WWE <laughs> New Era, and it's like, what the fuck is this? Who named this? Right. <laughs> it's on the shitter. Hang on. <laughs> I think TV Tropes has a list. I'm going to go pull up TV Tropes because they're the most reliable, you know. Oh, yeah. Good old TV Triple Tropes. Triple H really does not have a head for business. Like, man. Oh, yes, my, my favorite thing favorite, the Triple Era. Okay. <laughs> the triple Era. Hang on, let's see. Okay. The WWE Universe Era from 2008 to 2011. The WWE Inc. Era from 2011 to 2014. The Reality Era, 2014 to 2016. The New Era from 2016 to present. That is, w between 2008 and now, which is a period of 11 years, four eras... The... By the way, yeah, go ahead. Oh god, I forgot people counted the fucking invasion. Silly me. By, the, by the, the way, people power era. Oh yeah, that's a separate one. Oh, Gosh, darn it, they forgot it. Last night, I remembered that John Lauren and I existed, and I was really sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that's that's usually how it happens with me as well. Whenever I see footage of WWE twelve. <laughs> John Lauren, but, uh, yeah. anonymous GM. Does this shit oh ever God. end? No. But by the way, speaking of Triple, Triple H. Oh well, yeah, we never found out who the anonymous GM was, right? It was Hornswoggle. It was Hornswoggle. Oh. Wait, was it really? Yes. Canonically, it oh, was right, it was. <laughs> right, it, it was. was. Not only that, it I was, was, it was Hornswoggle. Like a computer or something. It was like Hornswoggle. The whole time. It was Hornswoggle under the ring the entire time with a laptop. <laughs> Like, okay, I've hated Michael Cole for forever, 
But for the love of God, like, they should have just gone for the obvious payoff of there is no anonymous GM, Michael Cole is just dicking everyone around. <laughs> like, that... Okay, that would actually be an interesting turn, at least for the fucking authority angle that they keep going for again and again. To have some mm. klutz, some minor putts that's not important in the grand scheme of things, has just been secretly manipulating everyone else through pure lies and bullshit. Mm. And just no one ever figured it out. You know what the problem with the authority thing is? Hang, hang on, I just want to point out, because this might okay. be a thing Pink would remember. You remember that time in X-Men where there was this grand conspiracy like over the Brotherhood of Mutants and the Acolytes? And it turned out the guy who was putting everyone against each other was fucking Toad. Yeah. Yeah, that. Basically that. Anyways, continue soon. Yeah, the problem with the uh, authority angle that they keep trying to push is that, like, for the longest time, WWE has had, like... They've basically been a representation of what's going on in society to some extent. Like, with the Attitude Era, that was very much so a representation of, like, teens in the 90s, like, rebelling or whatever. And the authority angle is trying to basically just tap back into that feeling because that's what Trump thinks people want. When actually WWE needs to be trying to tap into what people of the modern age want like they've always done and they're not doing that because triple h does not have a mind for business and vince mcmahon is kind of going brain dead i should so make, what you're I saying is that, what you're hang saying... on you fucked up triple h's name and called him trump instead by the way I triple did? h yeah i said triple h but <laughs> I was no like, you, you, you said trump, trump. what i but... definitely said triple h i'm probably no this, the second time you said triple h the first time you said trump okay <laughs> but anyway the uh, freaking yeah. So what? I'm just swearing my words, but yeah. And what they need to do is push Jeff Hardy because he's suicidal. It'll sell like hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> Bring back that stupid uh, Impact Luchador, but rename him back to Suicide. Below, no. Odo Medic. Um, yes, Manic. The one wasn't he introduced in the video game? Yes, he was. Why? Wait, who? Medic or suicide, suicide. Uh, whichever name you want to call him. That's the dumbest. I, I'm, okay, imagine if after WWE 12, Cass debuted in real life. Like what? <laughs> imagine if after WWE 12, Baron Big Blade. Cass debuted. <laughs> oh god, he did debut. Big Cass. Shit. It was a little later than that, but yes. Oh God! Oh, no God. wonder Big Cass failed. They didn't capitalize quickly enough on that. No, no wonder Big Cass sucked. <laughs> didn't oh they... boy, they really dropped the ball with that one. Didn't Cass beat his girlfriend or something? No. Was no, that, that, that was his that girlfriend was Enzo. Might have beat him though. Kelly. Oh God. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was it Adam Rose that beat his girlfriend? Yes. Okay. I think so. Yeah. What was Cass and Adam Rose Rose and that one uh, Rich Swan. Rich Swan? Oh. Rich Swan. And. What did Enzo do then? I forget. Enzo was accused of rape, though it later turned out he was innocent, I think. I think think so too. Allegedly. Uh, Cass. Was it. What was it? Cass was in trouble. Was Cass in trouble for beating up a dwarf? Yes. That or. That or being boring. You couldn't be that, fired for either, really. I, WWE so, will not fucking punish you for being boring nowadays. Who are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, Corbin's still on TV. Yeah, what? true. Oh god. By the way, can, can we just can we just start calling Triple H his real name that Chong gave gave him like of the start of DX? Try. Shut up. <laughs> the, <laughs> god. Oh man. Every now and then, you just need to remind yourself that wrestling has sucked before. Yeah. Apparently, Big Cass got into a fight with some other indie wrestlers. That doesn't even remotely surprise me. Like he got, he, he got into a you know, fight with Brian Beck. <laughs> Two guys whose names I do not know. I think Ryback would kill him. Didn't Ry- <laughs> didn't Ryback seriously injure like a ton of people? I mean, yeah. Well, obviously he injured Punk, and and now we're seeing the ramifications of that. But. 
Um, uh, did Wait, you, did he cause, you... like, Punk to have brain damage or something, and that's why, like, Punk kept going to UFC? No, but he did hurt Punk pretty bad, and Punk had to get, like, put on a ton of pain meds for it, and that's why Punk shit his pants on SmackDown. Hmm. Is it is it is it the thing? Is it that is it right back? Why Punk got the staph infection on his back or something? I think so. Yes. I think literally every medical uh, issue that Punk has mentioned he had was a result of right back. Right, and uh, that little quotation that Clown showed off, Punk confront claims to claims to it's wrestling. So keep in mind, you know, shooting and working. But Punk claimed to have confronted Ryback backstage and asked him, are you, like, he said, either you're careless or you're fucking stupid. And Ryback replied, yeah, I'm fucking stupid. And I don't know what stories I've heard. Well, I've, I've definitely heard of the wacky thing Ryback had with believing that all wrestlers should be paid the same regardless of star level. So, right. Yeah, yeah, I guess he is stupid, but... <laughs> <laughs> The day JTG gets paid as much as John Cena, that, that, that'll be the fucking day. That'll be the I fucking mean, he, day. he won't be paid as the same as John Cena because he's not in the WWE anymore. Oh, I know, he <laughs> wrote two books about it. He, he wrote two? Yeah, he it, wrote a second JTG? one. Yeah, JTG. Yeah. He wrote what? two books. Two whole books. I'm like surprised one book was, I can, I can, I'm surprised he one, had more than two matches. <laughs> one book I can sort of understand. Two... Well, hang on. I think the first book was titled, Damn, Why'd I Write This Book? The second one was titled, Damn, Why'd I Write Another? Or something like that. Oh. Hang on, let me look it up. This is vital information. I'm just gonna hope Google understands what I'm saying when I type in JTG. <laughs> Don't just send me like a shoe it brand means, or something. It means just to go. <laughs> Oh my god, what? why was he in Sharknado? Oh boy. Who hasn't been in Sharknado? Me? <laughs> yes. The hell, I'd accept the payday. Yeah. Ruining each other. I, 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 can, I can feel around. I can feel around for like half a meal. <laughs> Probably even less. Oh god, Wikipedia doesn't even list his bibliography. JTG bibliography is something I'm going to have to fucking Google. <laughs> <laughs> Never in a million years would I expect to hear that sentence anywhere. He doesn't have a bibliograph bibliography because he doesn't doesn't know the world word. <laughs> Hang on, I've got to find his actual name because he didn't put it under JTG, or if he did, oh, the shit. bibliography <laughs> didn't. Jason Paul, yeah, Jay the Gangster, huh? I, I find it funny, Shad Gaspard got out way before he did. And look where Shad Gaspard is. With him. No, wait, what? I'm pretty sure they, I'm pretty sure they teamed up again on the Indies, on Scribe Time. Yeah, they've had several tag matches together in the past. Why? Shad Gaspard actually gets good work as like a mocap actor now. He does mocap for a ton of video games, including... Uh, yeah, he did He did God of War. Yeah, he did the combat Oh, animation. I did not know that. He did wow. all of Kratos' combat, combat animations in God of War for PS4. Very nice. Addy, did you Way know... Way to you go, Shad. I always believe in you. <laughs> Addy, did you know you were playing as Shad Gaspard in God of War? Or God of no, War? But, but, no, but now, now I am freaking disappointed that, that he didn't have the shotgun emote. He was also Bane in... Batman the Enemy Within, which was the Telltale game. I did not know that game was mocapped, but in hindsight, that makes sense. Because Bane's moves actually did look good, which is odd for Telltale yeah. Combat. Yeah, I can't believe. Yeah, I, I did not know Telltale did motion capture. That's very strange. But... Why did the animations look so terrible then? That makes no sense. Hi, actors. <laughs> Maybe their motion they, equipment just... I didn't know that their engine... They HR director didn't understand. That engine is, like, older than, like, motion capture has, like, existed. Well, I mean... Like, I'm pretty sure that engine is from the 90s. No! And they just pulled it out. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I want to say the first entry with that... When they brought back Sam and Max, wasn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, like 2006, seven, Somewhere thereabouts, yes. So it is pretty fucking old. Yeah, David Cage, had, David Cage was a thing by then, so Mocap probably existed. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. Anyways, That's cool. let's go ahead and wrap up the punk thing. I just want to go around and get yeah. everyone's opinions on punk. Let's start from the bottom. Soon, what do you think of CM Punk? He's a dick. Well, yeah, but a I mean... self-obsessed, a... arrogant asshole. Well, yeah, but I mean, as a wrestler... <laughs> <laughs> oh, as a wrestler? Eh. I mean... He's a dick. Money, money he's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, I mean, he's talented as a wrestler. He's just, like, such an unlikable person that I don't want him in wrestling anymore. I mean, if we have to cut out unlikable people in wrestling, we're going to be working with a very small roster. That's true. We're, we're going to have to stop the Xavier Woods. Oh, God. We I, have a roster of yeah. Daniel Bryan and nobody else. It would be him and Ling <laughs> wrestling himself. Nah, Daniel Bryan <laughs> and John Cena. Oh, no. No, nah, no. Cena strikes me as a secret dick. Yeah, Maybe. Cena's supposed to be a secret dick, I think. I think I may have heard something like that, yeah. That's true. Has the list of Black done anything bad? Probably. <laughs> Pro probably. Like, I'm struggling to think of anyone other than Brian that is just notorious, notoriously nice. I would say Ollie. Big Show, but I heard that story from one of the members that they had a friend who, like, was almost, were like, was the Big Show, like, on the road tried to get with them or whatever. That's interesting. And it sounded really dickish, the way that it was. Because, like, Big Show has a wife and everything and stuff. And I'm pretty sure the friend of the poor member had like a relationship too. Right, but this is this is like my uncle works for Nintendo level source work here, so yeah. let's go ahead and just pretend it doesn't exist. Your I think uncle it was works for Nintendo Cave too? I think it was either Caveman who said that or Mike. I doubt it was no Mike said that Mike said that Gene Gene Oakland. Gene Oakland yeah. tried to get with his ex. That's what Mike said once upon a time. Okay. Which absolutely cops. I think cop it might have been Caveman. That, that, is that absolutely cops with the other Gene Okerlund stories I've heard. That guy sounds like a dick. <laughs> but yeah, Pink's, Pink's right. I don't think I've ever heard anything bad about Mustafa Ali. I mean, he said Kali, didn't he? No, I said Ali. Ah, okay. I didn't <laughs> yeah, I was like, Kali? I mean, <laughs> yeah, Kali. Notable good guy. Yeah, other than that, I'm struck. Kevin Nash seems like kind of a sweetheart in some of the interviews, but no. he certainly had his dick moments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kevin Nash ran with the click, so I I think that excludes him. Yeah, probably. Hunter? Oh, uh, Kane? Kane? Yeah, I can see Kane, Kane, absolutely. Everybody loves Kane. Everybody oh, loves yeah, Kane. 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 Undertaker. Although Undertaker can't I, wrestle I, anymore. Yeah, right. I feel like Undertaker has his moments. Kane, oh, Kane no, Undertaker seems like a good is a guy. super nice guy. Literally everybody... Oh. Is industry loves undertaker because he's All like right. he will literally he's literally like job so that he could put other people over well i mean that's just doing your job yeah but like he wants to put people yeah that's true and he, and he helps out like people on the lower of the card a lot like i have heard nothing but good things about undertaker behind the scenes and the only problem is that like he can't wrestle any no he can't Supposedly for a while there, Taker was the only thing keeping Sean on a leash. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was that famous match where they said that Taker taped up his fists backstage thinking that Sean was going to go, Sean was going to shoot and not, uh, not job? That Sean was going to go rogue? Mm -hmm. It wasn't something with, Au it wasn't a program with Austin, was it? <clears throat> that was WrestleMania with uh, Steve Austin. It was Austin, yes. Yes, that was the one. Like, reputedly, uh, uh, Taker is just the guy that backstage, if there's any dispute, you just bring it to Taker, because Taker's the only guy who will mediate it fairly. Yeah, right. I, I feel I feel like now he's just treated as the guy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, he, he's, he's the authority backstage. Yeah, I mean, in terms of just pure legacy, what he means to the business and everything, like, 
WWE can insist all the time that Sean is the best wrestler of all time if they want to, but Taker's the best. Yeah. And I'm looking Ta- at like the Taker roster did freaking of- they, Taker did suicide dive, so he even I <laughs> Okay, now come on. That's yeah. <laughs> by by those but standards, I... hang on. We've got a wide class of the greatest wrestlers of all time. <laughs> that's not why I think he's the greatest. I just think that that's the that's reason that I like him. Because he's so freaking large and he's, he did suicide dives. Yeah, destroy those knees even faster. And those hips. My god, Taker's... How many hip surgeries has Taker had by now? How many hips has Taker had, had, has had by now? <laughs> <laughs> they just rip them out and put in new ones. Uh, he's a fucking robo-man by now. <laughs> they'll have Taker wrestling a hundred years from now and he'll just be Robocop. <laughs> And he has to he has to wrestle Sting in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> ah, wrestling's dumb. Pink, what do you think of CM Punk? As a wrestler, I greatly enjoyed him. I thought he was fantastic on the mic. I thought he was great in the ring. His straight edge savior was one of my favorite gimmicks in wrestling of all time. Oh yeah, that was pretty good. All right, Addy, what do you think of CM Punk? I don't care for him. <laughs> The only time time I liked him was after the pipe bomb, but that was more because I disliked Cena at the time and not because I liked Punk. Ah, oh, so you're a Mark. <laughs> yeah, I was a Mark in 2011, yes. <laughs> yeah, back when Eddie was like two years old. Come on, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, the pipe bomb was a work. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, obviously. It's, it's, the best, <laughs> it's the best Rook Chills has done. <laughs> for my for my part, I'm obviously on Pink's side. Like, straight edge savior, fantastic. Like, Punk is a smarmy heel. Because it's one of those things of, like, Punk in real life is a smarmy asshole. So if he's <laughs> playing a smarmy asshole on screen, it works. And once he, once he did the pipe bomb, ruined. Done. Throw him in the trash. Gone. Like, he, he never worked as a face for me. If you want no. a if you want a plucky indie style smaller face, Daniel Bryan's right there. They were trying to make him like a Stone Cold Steve Austin type face. Right. Yeah. That would never have worked. It didn't work. It, it didn't, didn't work. work. But at the same time, you have to be fair and look at everyone they put up against Punk during that the, time. The pipe bombs just ended up getting like ridiculous. He was dropping a pipe bomb like every week. And you can't do that because then you're wasting all your material within the first half month of the program. It also doesn't become a pipe bomb if you're literally always dropping pipe bombs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> not, not to mention that some of it was just regular wrestling promos. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to get in the first... ring at Hell in a Cell and I'm going to fucking kill you. Well, yeah, there. Pipe bombs. I'm going to get in the ring and I'm going to be in the ring. You can't, <laughs> you can't stop me from being in the ring. I do think that the first pipe bomb was very good, a very good <clears throat> way. Like, it was handled very well by WWE and Punk. I disagree, but that that's your choice. I, I thought it was the big, I thought it was a work of trash. I mean, it, <laughs> well, it would have been handled better if, like, they had... Here's the thing. If, like, after CM Punk had left with the WWE title, supposedly, if he hadn't returned literally within, like, two weeks, it would have felt better i guess yes i, I will agree that to kind that. of ruined it they just couldn't help but bring him back like because yeah. they accidentally struck gold but yeah like i have i have definitely one big issue with the pipe bomb it, inter- it interrupted the fantastic heel run that truth was having that that's, that's what i've mentioned multiple R-Truth, times on the forum it's like heel oh. run was- yeah, R Truth's heel run was fantastic. Is that what we, is that like, the one he had with, with freaking Miz? Uh, no, no, that one was. Later. Miz came along a little later. It the was one... when he was first starting to do all the little Jimmy stuff. Yeah, the oh, right. Jimmy stuff was amazing. I actually was hoping that he would get the WWE title because he had like never gotten it, and I think there hasn't been a black WWE champion since Kofi. Kofi Kingston? Kofi. Yeah, Kofi right. picked it up at last WrestleMania. Oh, last WrestleMania? Yeah. Okay, well, at the time of our truth the last one who had won a WWE championship was, like, Booker T, I think? 
Booker yeah. T never won the WWE Championship. He won the World Heavyweight. Oh, he shit. won the World Title. Yeah. So okay. last WWE last champion, champion would have been Rock. If we're counting, if we're counting World Heavyweight, then Mark Henry won it in 20, uh, 2011 or twenty twelve. Okay. Yes. WWE Championship though was like Rock. The last one would have been, I guess, the Rock. Yeah. And I mean, like. I'm I'm glad that Kofi won it because I've always been a sucker for Kofi. But like, even I'll right. admit, Kofi's t- title run was a fucking fart in the wind. I, I supported Kofi, and then he joined the new new day, and then no. <laughs> yeah, Kofi's yeah. one of those guys. It's better for him to chase the title than for him to actually hold it. The fact that he held yeah. on for like seven months was not a smart choice. Yeah, because it oh was great for WrestleMania. And I, I would have been okay with him holding for like three months and then having him drop it to somebody else who can actually carry the SmackDown brand. But Kofi held on to it for so long. It, it, I think it just soured everyone on Kofi and the New Day as a whole, which I'm fine with because I'm not a fan of the New Day as a unit. But damaging Kofi that much, I wasn't okay with. They needed to have him drop it a lot sooner because it hurt Kofi, it hurt everybody who worked with Kofi, it hurt SmackDown as a product, you, which is not something you want to do as it's just changing hands into another company or television why, slot. If you have a dark why horse, is, Vic, if you have a dark why horse, just keep oh, Cross Lesnar on. I'm sorry, go. I, I just want to get the, the, get this out real quick. If you have a dark horse victory, the dark horse cannot hold the title for long, because the idea is that they were never really in the runnings and they managed to sneak one in. But if that just puts them in the runnings, then it makes it look relatively, like, expected in hindsight. Right. And soon, go ahead, what you're, what were you going to say about Lesnar? Uh, why is Lesnar just constantly holding the Universal Championship? I have no like, idea. Why? Is he getting near he, San, San Martino's he's level? He's big bulky, man. Is That's he getting, why. Is he Lesnar, has... Is, I want to ask Pink this, because Pink would know. Okay. Is Lesnar getting near San Martino's level of days with the championship? I actually don't know that, but... I, 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 I have it pulled up right here. He has 688 days on the Universal Championship with three reigns. Yes, mm-hmm. and San the Martino... Second most, the, sec- the person who has held it for the second most time is Kevin Owens with only 188 days. Well, I mean, when we're counting it as a new championship, then things are going to be different. Yeah, he literally has held it longer than, like, everybody else combined. This is one of those things where, like, typically I'd advocate for long reigns because they, the, they add legitimacy to the title, but not on fucking Lesnar. Right. So, soon, how many of those reigns that Lesnar has had were Roman? What's that? Shut up, Addy. <laughs> For for the love of God, the man's got leukemia now. Can we ease off him? <laughs> Roman Reigns has only held it once for like sixty days. Well, better God, than Finn Balor. Better than Finn Balor. <laughs> Finn Balor like less than one day. Genuinely, yeah. Finn, Finn yeah. Balor. Finn Balor had had the Universal Title for as long as Rey Mysterio has had the WWE Title. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, he held it longer life. than that. He, he was maybe 14 hours. Rey Mysterio was like two. Yeah. Rey Mysterio was 20 minutes. <laughs> Rey Wyatt for like... Had the championship for like 16 days. I think he still has it. Yeah, he has it right now. He's had it for like 16 days. Which... I, champion. I, I, we're we're so going far. wildly off topic here with the wrestling thing, but I'm honestly fine yeah. with that because it's an interesting discussion. But like, is... I'm confused. Is Bray Wyatt doing this a uh, mask gimmick, or is he doing like a uh, Mister Rogers gimmick? I thought he was doing. Yes. I thought he both. He's doing. He's doing both. Yes, the mask gimmick is a part of the Mister Rogers gimmick. I thought he just changed gimmicks. No, no apparently not. Oh my yeah. gosh. Wait, that, what that... is WWE nowadays? He's not Mick Foley. Everybody knows that, right? He's not Mick Foley. Like, okay, they're they're both big puds. I'll be the first like as a Foley fan, I'll admit Foley was a big pud. But like Foley, I mean, had, hey, Foley had charisma. Wyatt has yeah. the hair and the beard. Li- <laughs> oh my gosh, he's literally using the mandible ball. He's yeah, he is. Using the claw? Is using he the is. It's his ball. it's his finisher now. Why? The mandible claw. Why? <laughs> he's just discount Foley. 
He couldn't <laughs> look, dude. He couldn't be Undertaker. He he had to go go after someone else. Is w- <laughs> he had to shoot lower. It's like WWE is doing the fake Diesel and fake Re- Razor Ramon thing again. Hey, we've got Bray Wyatt as fake McFoley. Here here's CM Punk as fake Steve Austin. <laughs> when do we when do we get Bret Hart but it's a midget again? Here's Triple H as fake Vince McMahon. Yeah, yeah, you're not wrong about that either. Are we sitting on a fake rock? Is that Ricochet? Because I know Ricochet started stealing the started stealing Roman the people's Reigns elbow. Was supposed to be the fake rock. <laughs> I don't know why Triple H being fake Vince McMahon freaking sparked my mind. It's, it's Triple H and Triple H. We get nose. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> It, it, it's like the sting mask. He just puts another nose over his nose. Yeah. <laughs> also, but I like also the put... idea that that's all you need to disguise yourself as Triple H. A nose and some hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like People just see a nose enter the room and it's like, oh, here comes Hunter. <laughs> hang, hang on, hang on. It's still coming. Still coming. Okay, there he is. <laughs> 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 ah. When you look at that, it's Hunter. It's, it's already making jokes about Sturgeon Slaughter's wife. <laughs> oh, man. All right, so what other topics do we have? Okay, hey, the new Smite God, Heimdall. Oh, yeah, Heimdall. So, let me get this straight. This character is another Addy? No, yeah. this is just this is literally just Uller. He's literally yeah, just Uller. What, that's what Alex meant. <laughs> yeah, I know, <laughs> but Addy. I would switch. <laughs> Of course you won't! So why the fuck they even introduce the character if he's just already in the game? More money. <laughs> okay, so let me get this straight. He's a hunter who can switch to melee. Yep. I assume... Does his melee give lifesteal? Uh, I don't... I don't think so. Oh, so they haven't I mean, revealed his kit yet. They haven't officially revealed it. Let me pull up the... Uh, the, the data mine. Because, I mean, he might have an interesting kit. Like, Addy, if he did have an interesting kit that wasn't just Uller, would you be interested? I guess, maybe. That's only if he also has XSG strengths aligned. He's got, like, combo melee attacks like Arthur does. Which is interesting. I don't know what Arthur does. Someone elaborate. Pink, Pink. You, Pink, you play a bit of Arthur. What's what's Arthur's combos? I think Arthur. I think Pink is dead right now. So we're gonna have to. Arthur is it. dead. Arthur is dead. <laughs> the king is dead. Long live the king. Uh, he has a teleport. Which that everybody knows now. Yes. Transport other people and himself. That's Osiris, okay. Or possibly <laughs> or Horus, rather. Or it possibly teleports his basic attack. Or it could teleport his basic attacks as well. Huh? Oh. So. Which is really interesting, honestly. Teleporting bullet, my god. When do, we, when do they add, do, add Virgil, the anime god? And then, of course, there's his ultimate where he, like, drags people through Heimdall and uh, Jotunheim. Or not Jotunheim. Uh, the what's Rainbow the, the fire realm? What's the fire realm? Oh, oh, oh! I Muspelheim. 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 Yeah, he drags them through Helheim and Muspelheim. Interesting. Interesting. So it's a cutscene super. Yeah. Yeah. So can I do? Can I do sick combos like Raja? Probably. I mean, he's got like chained combo melee attacks. So probably. So I mean, during, during the ultimate. <laughs> Quick time. Oh, events. maybe I don't know. God. Uh, there's a stun. Uh, I don't know a lot about all. And there's apparently a charge, like the Giannis ult, where it like charges up the ult while the ult is going on. I don't honestly know. I haven't, like, he, they haven't revealed his official kit, so. So it sounds like Uller with more teleporting and portals. Yeah, it sounds like a more interesting Uller. Yeah, that might be, that might be interesting. Like, in this case, he might be a very, a much more aggressive, uh, fast-moving, mobile Uller. Does that interest you, Addy? I don't know. 
I really like the idea of him telling his basic attacks. Like, that isn't that like just Jettis, really... though? Well, I mean, what? No. The the idea of an axe just flying in from off screen interests me. <laughs> <laughs> I see Heimdall in front of me, and axe is behind me. Something is up. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining. Like, that sounds really cool. Anyway, but. Uh, other than that, they also, like, had a teaser for the Season 7 lineup for next year. And so the first one is a Chinese god represented by a flying cricket. You're gonna need to run, W. Lubu, Lubu. Yep. It is. Okay, here's the, <laughs> the thing. The antenna. I was thinking that it was Lubu, right? So it was flying general. Yeah. But here's the other thing. The next god... Um, the next god is teased as being like Magnolia in the dating data mining, Magnolia. And this is the first god that we're gonna get for 2020 besides Heimdall, right? Okay, I don't know who's associated with Magnolias. Oh, Mulan okay. translates yeah, Mulan. into Magnolia. Mulan is Magnolia. Oh, Mulan, Chinese god. So Flying just... cricket. So... There's a cricket with Mulan. Remember in the movie? Like there's the cricket with Mulan? Yeah, 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 but... So I'm starting to think that it's Mulan after I've thought about it a little bit. Yeah, because Lubu's never really been turned into a mythological character. He's more of a historical figure, whereas Mul Mulan is yeah. like a story. Yeah. So I, I think Mulan is probably going to be the first god after... After Ulan, Baba Yaga. Finally. Finally. I have been waiting for that one. Yep. And then after Baba Yaga, some ocean monster. Possibly Charybdis. Possibly some other fish monster that I don't know about. I'm going to bet on Charybdis. Is there a Hindu or Polynesian one? There's got to there's gotta be one for them. Possibly. I, I um, have to imagine there's a Polynesian sea god of some kind, or sea monster. Oh yeah, there is a Polynesian sea god. Um, I actually saw someone suggesting it as a possibility. Let me see what they suggested. But uh, after whatever the fish god is, it's going to be Tsukuyomi. The Japanese Japanese god of moon. Yes. No, Addy, do not make a Naruto reference. The... Ah, here we go. Kanaloa, a Polynesian squid god of the abyss. Ooh, I like I'm it. I'm down. Which they how, did how many head ties kids do they get? <laughs> that whatever god it was was like of the abyss. So probably that's a good bet, Kanaloa. Yeah, yeah, I see. Either way, we're going to get some squid monster with tentacles. And we're probably going to get anime skins for that. Of course we will. Because that's what Smite is at this point. <laughs> Just a ton of anime skins for everybody. Yep. Oh, man. Based off what you told me, we're not going to be able to record Ruby until the next update. Uh, rec record Ruby, yeah. Record Smite until the next update because this main screen is just playing the Ruby theme song. Yeah. Which is probably and super copyrighted. The Ruby sucks after, anyway, so who cares? Uh, after Tsukiyomi, there's some god that's represented by a bear. Well, we've already got our Brother bear. With an Asian design. <laughs> Maybe a red panda? A bear or a red panda? Uh, well, red panda, there's a new Addy main right there. <laughs> but one thing I saw that is that it could be like the Korean bear goddess, which would mean the Korean pantheon would be added. Ooh, interesting. I'm not seeing any play possible. for that one. But, like, we already have a bear goddess with Archeo, so I'm not sure how they would, like, differentiate the two. This, this one is literally just a bear. That, that's the name of the god. A bear. Pantheon. Nature. A bear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. a bear. Pan pantheon. Native American. What? 
I don't freaking yeah, know. There, the, there is no Native the American. Like what? There, I I know that there are different freaking things, but I don't know any of them by name. If they're There's adding no any Native American. American pantheon, they need to hit whichever one it hit is that has the wind to go. I mean, technically, there's the Mayans, but... Well, yeah, that's true. Hang on, though. I need to find which one had the wind to go. The, uh... Algonquin! Yes, get the Algonquin. Algonquin pantheon just for the wind to go. That would also mean, like, the potential of Bigfoot. Because no, yeah. Bigfoot is, like, Native American. Yeah, mythology. but... Like... Well, Wendigo is kind of Bigfoot adjacent. Yeah, that's true. Oh, skin changers. Yeah. The walkers, skin you mean. Changers, which, they have a water panther, too, which sounds really cool. Hmm, all right. A giant hair. What? Giant hair? Yeah, oh, like oh, a, a rat. Large scalp. Yeah. I mean, that sounds interesting, but I think it's obvious It's the Easter Bunny. I'll finally get payback on Addy after all these years. The bunnies have come for you this time. <laughs> but yeah, they don't really have that much mythology besides the Wendigo. I mean, that's definitely an alley to pursue, but I mean... I'd rather see them start completing some of the pantheons that they've just kept introducing. Yeah, like the, the Celtic pantheon needs to be added on to. Yep. What's the... Or Polynesian. We literally only have one Polynesian god still. And one one Slavic, one Polyn... Yeah, yeah, you just said Polynesian, silly me. One voodoo. One voodoo. But Slavic... Well, we're going to get a new Slavic one with Baba Yaga. That's true. But we could possibly be getting a new Polynesian one with Kanaloa, if that's how what it turns out to be. Possibly. I mean, if, if shapeshifters are also on the menu, then Maui is still in play. Yeah. Be, be at Maui, it's, be at Maui it's, it's just the rock. But you, like having you've said that, rock, like, three times now. Did I? Yes! They, de <laughs> they described it as a monster from the abyss, so I doubt it's going to be. Maui. Yeah, it's probably not Maui. Maybe about, it's the gigantic crab. What are some other voodoo gods they could add? I, you know, I don't know. Like, like uh, Baron Samdi is the only... The trouble is with voodoo is that it's a mix of Yoruba and Catholicism. So either yeah. they can steal, from, steal stuff from Yoruba, or they can include Catholicism, which I don't think they want to. Yeah. As much as I would, as, I would, I would, as much as I would love to play as Michael. What do you, are you saying you don't want to play as Brodigo Borgia? Best Pope. <laughs> if they start including popes, then like why are why are we not playing the game right now? That, I'd never stop playing. <laughs> but yeah, like there's I I don't know what they would add for voodoo. Yeah, it's kinda rough. There's gotta be a couple unique ones to voodoo. I mean, if they're interested Aida, in including... There's Aida, the goddess of the rainbow. That's true. That sounds cool. That sounds cool. They could... If they're interested in including, like, real people that people just, like, mythologize to a certain degree, they could go with, uh, what's her name? The queen of voodoo in New Orleans. Uh, Marie Laveau? Yeah. Um, which, that one would be a weird one, because she was alive within the last hundred years, but, you know. They could also do Baron Samdi's wife. Uh, that, that is definitely true as well. I mean, as uh, long as uh, we're in the Caribbean yeah. pool, like, they could go ahead and throw in Santeria stuff as well. Oh, for the Yoruba, we need Ogum. We need what? Ogum. Ogum. I've heard that name before. He's like the god of war for the Yoruba people. Also, weirdly enough, god of the roads. Oh, god, they make him another and so, hunter. And so the Yoruba people will, like, sacrifice dogs by hitting them on the road to Ogum. Okay. They'll intentionally hit dogs on the road to sacrifice them to Ogre. Interesting. Are they going to include that mechanic in Smite? <laughs> random, random dogs just start spawning on lane. <laughs> Ogun just like hops in a fucking car. I'm pretty sure that's like an <laughs> ultimate in Leg Le League of Legends, isn't it? Uh, maybe for one of the steampunk characters, they might have a steampunk car. 
League and Dota both have lots of steampunk characters, though I don't, don't think Dota ever got a car. Or maybe it's Hearth, the, the heart, Heroes of the Storm? Heroes, Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Heart. I might... <laughs> well, there's Heroes of Whatever New Earth as well. Game. Which, but, yeah. does anyone even play Heroes of New Earth anymore? What? What is that? I haven't even heard of it. No, Heroes like of it. the Storm, isn't it? Well, Heroes of the Storm has stopped development, so I don't know how many people are yeah, playing that. Yeah, they, like, completely deleted that. I don't like, know if they they've abandoned well, it. Well, it's not deleted, but, like, it, it's dead. It's definitely dead. They've definitely stopped development. I hope Smite doesn't die, but... Smite? It might. I don't... I, I can't see Smite dying. Smite is... The main... a, Smite doesn't have a competitor. That's the thing. Yeah, the main thing with Smite is that, like, it's staying alive because of console. It's the only MOBA on console. That, like, that, 90%. Yeah. That's a big part of it. But I think a lot of it, it, like, I think you guys would all, like, maybe not Addy, but you guys would generally have a lot of trouble getting into your regular variety MOBAs, like Dota, having to control it with a mouse and telling, like, yeah. like a strategy game. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like to try Dota 2 every now and then, and it, I, I don't play it for long, because LOL, fuck that, playing without a team, no thanks. But, but I mean, it's a wildly different world from Smite. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, 90% of the player base is console. Hmm. So. I would not expect yeah. that. Yeah. I would not expect that. That's interesting. You notice it mainly when you're on PC, or I guess on Xbox, because you can see, like, yeah, who's on what, and most of the people on are going to be on Xbox. They haven't added cross-play with PlayStation yet, have they? They did. No, they did? They did, they did. did. Cross-play is on, cross-save is not yet. Oh, okay. Well, shit, if they had cross-save, I'd, I'd get a, suddenly a ton more gods, but... <laughs> if, yeah. they had a, if they had a cross, if they had a cross play, I would I would download it from freaking my PS4 again. Cause yeah, I want cross save. Cause like on PC, I have like five fucking gods, and on PlayStation 4, I have like eighty. Yeah. Yep, I know that feeling. Like on PC, I want to say one of my old main gods I am entirely missing on PC, and I don't remember if it's Wu Kong or who's the other guy I used to play a ton back in the day. Uh, it's it's not Cobb. Cobb. I've got Cobb. Yeah, you've got losing Cobb. Uh, who was the other one? Was it Zeus? It was Zeus. Yes, I do not have Zeus on PC. Wait, which sounds weird, because I, like, I know I've not played Zeus since I started playing with Addy and Pink, so the fact that I have a pocket Zeus might be confusing for them, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, pocket Zeus, pocket Zeus, like, pocket Zeus sounds like a shitty euphemism for a dick. That, that's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's always my favorite moment when you're playing with someone you've played with for a while, and they're shocked by one of your main choices. <laughs> I'll always remember I mean, that yeah. session of Guilty Gear XX or Exert or whatever, where I picked May and Addie was just like, You play May? Like, I'll admit, she's not my type, like, appearance wise, but she's Guile, so it shouldn't be that bad of a shocker. Yeah, meanwhile, the only shocker with, with my means is that literally all of them are Akuma somehow, yeah. even though it wasn't by design. God. Oh. Like, Everyone I play has the Dark Auto somehow. It's just the power you give to the characters you play, not the other way around. Yeah. You play them and they pick up on an Akuma move. <laughs> Alright. Addy, what's coming out on the channel this week? Give me a sec. So soon is opening up all the soda cans right now. <laughs> no, it's a fucking yogurt. No, well, excuse me. Soon is opening up all of the yogurt cans. <laughs> Big difference. Uh, that means we're going to hear lips. Could you imagine smacking. yogurt coming in a can? That's <laughs> horrifying. I could, actually. Drinkable yogurt is better than yogurt you have to eat with a spoon. I I'm like going to disagree general. on the mere basis that I've never had a yogurt that I could drink, and it sounds kind of mortifying to me. Well, yeah. 
Yo- drinkable yogurts are just wannabe milkshakes. Yeah, but they're healthier than milkshakes. Say, I don't think I would like to drink the texture of a yogurt. I mean, do you drink what's the milk? That, uh, what's that line from The Good Place about frozen yogurt? You ruin something good so you can have more of it. That's yeah. what I think, when I think of drinkable yogurt. I mean, look, I'm a, well, that, that's the thing. Some people are bigger on convenience for food than others. I'm a big convenience guy. Like, I hate eating steak or lobster or crab because you got to work to get your food. I hate that. Yeah, that's true. Give me a burger any day of the week. Sometimes I'm that way, but other times, like, I want a nice meal. Most of the time, though, if I want something nice, I'm going to eat out. If I want a nice meal, I just get tacos. That's my qualification of a nice meal. (laughs) I mean, really, I mean, that future people suggest of, like, where you just, everything's a drink and you just down it instantly so you don't have to (laughs) stop and eat. Like, that, that's a perfect future for me. Like, yeah, just give me a uh, cheeseburger fries milkshake thing with 38 grams of protein in every fucking drop. Sure, why not? Just down it and get back to what I'm doing. So the videos coming out from the channel are on Monday, Metal Gear Solid 5. 5, yeah. <laughs> the fifth one. Oh, no. No, the no, first no. one. Oh, no. Why are we here? Just to suffer? Why are we here? Just to look at Snake's ass while, we wait, while he waits in the bushes for 13 hours? No. <laughs> oh. oh, look, but it's yeah. Wyatt's ass. Oh, no. Quick, back to Somehow Snake's ass. Somehow sna- sna- Snake implanted Wyatt's ass on, onto himself. No, fool. Quiet ripped off his ass and put it on herself. None can deny the majesty of Snake's own ass. The others have to take it. And for the love of God, what are the videos coming out this week? It's <laughs> Metal, Metal Gear, the first one. Yeah. Part three, I think. Part one of Metal Gear Solid One. No, part three. Part one. Part one has come out. Oh shit! Part three. Yeah. Yeah, but the one where we fight Gonket. Oh God, that that took us a while. Yeah, so there's that, and then also, Guilty Gear, the first session. Oh, That's wow. what I mean. That was a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> Whew. All right. Pink, you got anything coming out on your own channel? Probably. I don't know. I need to export some stuff and edit some stuff. All right. I'm just our own personal sessions of Civ Six between you and me. Like I'm just shooting them on a raw at this point. Fuck it. All right. All right, Eddie. Yeah. What's coming out on your channel? Well, for one, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Oh. I've I've recorded video like I recorded the last session I had with that game was like two weeks ago, <laughs> and I have videos until nearly the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's it RPG. is a sense of humor. And the thing is, I'm cutting out a lot of freaking just walking. Yep. And even then, <laughs> free roam RPGs. But uh... yeah, uh, free, free roam RPGs made by Ubisoft in 2019. Uh huh. Really. Yep. But that also probably I'll put up freaking Metal Gear or something then. Or wait, no, it, that's out. So let's see. I don't know. Some something's like um full stream. All right, and for my own channel, I believe this week I am coming out with another part of my playthrough as Wilhelmina in Civ VI. I need to record more of that. Another part of Prison Architect, I don't know if this week's the finale. I wrapped it up because I decided I wasn't very good at the game and I was just more interested in doing other content for the channel. (laughs) And part one of the multiplayer Civ VI playthrough with Pink, where I play as Hojo Tukamun and in Addy's... In memoriam to Addy, rest in peace. And Pink plays as John Curtin. We decide for our first multiplayer campaign we would play the most OP top tier Civs in the game. <laughs> and we have an okay time. I think we're a little I think we wound up screwing ourselves by being so cooperative. 
Right. Because I've wound up <laughs> stalling all the civ, all the AI civs in the game, except maybe Alexander. Through war. Alexander got stalled on his own. Yeah, by barbs. <laughs> <laughs> the only two serious competitors to pink in me were Tamiris and Moctezuma, both of whom I stalled with massive wars. So Pink's just kind of slowly trawling along until he gets a science victory. <laughs> or a diplomatic victory. Hopefully the diplomatic victory, because that'll come faster. <laughs> right. Save us from this suffering. <laughs> I've just been stuck in a slog war with Moctezuma and Tamiris for like 2,000 years. Because there's a giant-ass mountain range dividing me from both of them, so it's just all choke points all day. It, it, it's, there's a giant that's dividing you from them. Yeah, it's it's rough. It is rough. <laughs> oh, man. At this point, I should just kill Candy, come to think of it. Anyways, so, all right. Soon, what you been up to this past week? Uh, this past week? Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just got a Fallen Order, Jedi Fallen Order. Okay, I don't think you've got much time in with it, but what was what have you got to say about the, your limited time with it? Uh, well, I've played for about two hours, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's basically Uncharted and Dark Souls. Like, with a Metroidvania pretty... structure? Yeah. Well, with well, like, well yeah. see, now you're just speaking our language, because you can say Uncharted and Pink's in. You can say Metroidvania right. and I'm in. And you can say Dark Souls and Addy's in. I'm and out. Yeah, that's, that's basically I'm so far out. With, I like, hate Star Wars. I don't, I, don't like, I don't like Uncharted. I don't like Dark Souls. I don't I like freaking I Star Wars. That, like, your lightsaber is so powerful that, like, you'll kill enemies in one to two hits. <laughs> The issue comes with the fact that, like, they also Dodging. kill you in, like, one to two hits. As it should be. See, like, that, that that's fair. That I'm fine with. There are some bigger bosses who, like, have huge health bars because they're giant fucking things. Yeah, yeah you stick a Rancor with that. The Rancor is probably not going to care that much. Yeah. Oh, no, you stubbed my toe, you monster. <laughs> Yeah, so it's it's honestly pretty good. I mean, it doesn't do anything new, but, like, it doesn't need to, so. Yeah, I mean, the whole Dark Souls structure of, you know, live fast, die hard combat like that can certainly work, and there are ways to make it easier while still making it where the player and enemy alike both die in two hits. Yeah. Because Souls, a part of Souls' thing is, for one thing, the Souls' enemies are sneaky bastards who will totally ambush you. Yeah, I do have a big problem with it, and maybe this is just because I'm on keyboard versus controller, but, like, to dodge, there's, like, a short dodge to press once, and then there's a longer do- dodge if you press twice on the dodge button. I want and to... Most of it's... Yeah? That's the way Neo does it, I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Most of the time, though, like, the short dodge is so useless that you have to, like, do the long dodge... Like, I... Yeah. Important question. Have you figured out if the short dodge has invulnerability on it? Any frame, invulnerability frames on it? I think it might, uh, actually, yeah. There, there you have it. It's not, like, the long dodge is for getting out of hitboxes, but the short dodge is just for frame-perfecting it so that you can immediately combo into attacks without letting up on the pressure yeah. too much. Also, parries are a big thing. Yeah, parries and short dodges, those are two things that are going to be become, become much more useful once you've spent more time with the game, I think. Yeah, and then, well, yeah. And then, like, if there's, like, someone who's shooting at you, like, you just parry, like, right as it hits you, and then it just goes back and kills them. <laughs> so, oh, that's it's, awesome. really, it's really not that big of a deal, and it honestly gets a little bit boring after a while because it's easy. To parry. Well, that, that's the thing. That's the thing from, like, Dark Souls and Bloodborne, what are the biggest enemy pain-in-the-ass enemies? The ranged enemies that are on the other side of the map sniping at you. Yeah. Like, so you don't have to worry about that here. It's it, it's just like, I'm imagining the guy fires the blaster shot at you and you just show him the reverse card from Uno. Yeah, <laughs> like, the worst part of Bloodborne to me was that guy with the fucking machine gun on the top of the tower. I don't think any of you guys... 
know what I'm talking about. Uh, I've not got that far in Bloodborne. I am still stuck it's at like Gascoigne. right after the... I, it's like the between the first two bosses. I, w I want to point out, like, not to spoil ahead, like, what we've been playing this week, but Addy has been playing through all of Neo 1, you've been playing through Jedi Fallen Order, and I've been playing through Bloodborne. So you got the Pink's, base pig. Pink's the only Pink's one here who hasn't been playing a Souls game. Pink's been playing <laughs> Sims 6. That's... Pink, Pink, Pink has, been, has been playing Sims 4, the, the hardest Souls-like game. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, some regular old Sim enters your house, but for some reason the Cleric Beast theme is playing? <laughs> You're just like, Wait. I've also been, uh, also been playing Crusader Kings 2 to get some of the, uh, the customization options for uh crusader kings 3 that that is an important thing to mention to addy and pink here because they don't have they don't know what you're talking about okay yeah so crusader kings 2 free on uh steam as well as one of the dlcs is free now actually two of the dlcs oh the ones the both the the uh, the one that lets you play the pagans is free oh, and then one. the one that lets you play the muslims is free being a Muslim has been unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> but you yeah, can, so you can you cannot make, make everyone halal. Make sure you both like pick that up. It All doesn't right. really require the, a very good computer. The funny, the funny thing about about the Muslim way of eating being called being called halal is that the Hungarian word for death is halal. <laughs> Written the same way, more or less. Eadils still has Crusader Kings 2 on his wish list. Oh my god. <laughs> has no one told him yet? I, no, I, I said so on the forum! <laughs> Fucking, Damn, that's when I picked it up! Fucking hell, I'll what PM him. Doing? Or something, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah. Him. <laughs> they have this like thing where like every two weeks they have a ruler with challenges <laughs> that let you unlock uh, special customizable features for your rulers in... Uh, Crusader Kings 3. So. Give Tyler the Crusader Kings 2 say Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I really had to stretch for this one. You owe me. <laughs> Can you even gift free games on Steam? Hell no. Probably not. <laughs> it would be funny though. Do you need I, I probably would have used that to try and pressure everyone into playing TF2 back in 2013 or 2014. So no. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, so the the notable thing here is last I heard from you, these challenges are not easy ones. No, they're not, no. Like I thought you'd already done everything there was to do in that game. I, I, I mean, fondly remember an era where you played nothing but Crusader Kings 2. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean I do have almost 2,000 hours in it right now. <laughs> so, which I think is the top game. Let me check real quick. Total War Warhammer 2 is 1,200 hours. So I guess if you combine both Total War Warhammers, then that's more than Crusader Kings 2. Oh god, and that number's only gonna go up. Because <laughs> CK2 is gonna be done yeah. once CK3 comes out, but no... The Warhammer 3 is still on the way. Yeah, but I mean, if I start combining Crusader Kings 2 with Crusader Kings 3... Well, yeah, then it's, then it's gonna be over, really. But I mean, I... Well, the thing is, though, Warhammer... The Warhammer trilogy is basically one big game. CK2 yeah. and CK3 are not. They are sequels. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. Alright, Pink, what you been up to? Please All right. Please say, like, oh, I've been playing Sekiro. Uh, <laughs> oh, I, 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 not. I've, I've been wrecking all of the bosses in all of the Souls games. I'm not sure what y'all are up to. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing The Outer Worlds. Finally oh, got around same. to doing that. What did you think of it? I'm enjoying it so far. I feel like I built my character the entirely wrong way at this point. Because... Hey, what, built them. what did you build? I went all charisma. That's what I, I did as well. That's how you're supposed to play Outer Worlds because your combat skills don't matter. Ah. See, I've been getting my ass kicked in every combat uh, 
section uh, just, I've come across. Just get the plasma rifle and then you win the game. Nice. I'm gonna or write that down for future game. reference. Just get the get the plasma rifle and win the game. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah. Okay, so you need engineering, so you can or science. You need science so you can upgrade the plasma rifle, and then once you're able to upgrade the plasma rifle, always like max it out, and then you win the game. I don't, I, I don't know. I, after a while, I just played through the game with the free, with like a plasma plasma sight I stole from the guards, <laughs> and by stole I be looted off of the dead, dead dead bodies. Yeah, melee is also pretty good too. So. Yeah, I'd been having more luck with the melee than the guns. Yeah. But yeah, just get Plasma Rifle. Especially Plasma Rifle 2.0. And then you win. And there's nothing they can do about it. <laughs> they have no choice in this matter. So, Story-wise, I feel like I haven't really connected to it the way I did New Vegas. Yeah. But I'm also thinking there's a big difference between those two in that with New Vegas, when I was first playing through that, I had volume turned off, mm -hmm. so I was reading through everything, and I can read a lot faster than any of the voice actors can talk. Mm -hmm. So, so far, to me, it's been kind of a trudge to get through it all. So I'm thinking, in the future, I'm just gonna disable the audio and do it the old school way of just reading it like I read all New Vegas. That's just how I play games, Pink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't a big. F I'm not a big fan of the Outer World story. It's just too on the nose with what it's trying to say. We yeah, I was getting that as well. We live in a society. Like, like the thing with like uh, having to rent out a like grave, and you're and after you die, you have like the amount of credits your life was worth on engraved on your gravestone like oh that's just bad writing mm. that's just so over the fucking top i was hoping that it'd get better once i got to a different planet like scenarios would change based on where you were going but i don't think that's how they're doing it no it doesn't really no that's a shame I, where are you yeah. sued uh there is a yeah i just got to uh monarch monarch i is that the big ship or is that after the big ship? No, that's after the big ship. All right, I think that I think on Monarch you can befriend the uh, the freaking corporations or at least a, a small bit. Mm. Which is no or at least I did. Which is no doubt the evil ending. Yeah. It's the no, evil. actually, it actually, I I got the good ending while also having a, also having a corporate guy on my team. Mm. I mean. Yeah, I guess. It's just, like, it's one... Of course, it's like every other Obsidian game where everybody is the asshole and there's no good people. Well, I mean, I think with New Vegas, like, New Vegas, there were good people, but there were no good factions, because every yeah. faction's going to have shitheads in it. Yeah. Because, I mean, the NCR had lots of good people in it. I mean, the president was a dickhead, but... Obsidian has a real problem with their obsession with, like, gray morality. I don't think they do. Yeah, they do. I they totally the, do. The NCR they literally have implemented it, like, ex like, so exceedingly much in every single game that they've published. The NCR are the clear winners in New Vegas. Like, someone might be able to pull for house, but, like, there, there is no moral gray area to the Legion. At all. The, yes, man. Yeah, well, independent is cheating. Come on, that, that's just oh, I'll rule it. I'll. It's cheating to just have the player character go. Oh, I'll do things right. I'll do it myself. <laughs> Thanos scene. Yeah, I was about to say cut to Thanos putting on Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, but like I'm thinking of like Knights of the Old Republic two, where they make like the Jedi, like assholes. That that is true. That is a specific writer who is known for that, and he particularly okay. is known for his hatred of the Jedi. Okay, but like in uh in the first planet of Outer Worlds, have you gotten through the first planet, Pink? 
I'm working my way through the first planet. I've not gotten okay. to anywhere else. Okay, I won't spoil it then, but basically you find out that the two factions are both really, really evil. Like, you think one is going to be good, but then you're like, oh, no. I'm not going to spoil it, Addy, but here's this Addy massive spoiler. Addy <laughs> knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. The only spoiler that, I, that I'll give is, look in the freaking ship. In my ship or their ship? Your ship. All right, because I've definitely not done that. Like, there, there's Wait. a companion on your ship. Oh, yeah. You mean Sam? Yes. Um, oh yeah, he that's... can't. He can't unlock Sam until he goes to the next planet. Well, yeah, but he'll know that Sam's there. <laughs> like he has, it will be a mission. Go, he has to go to Groundbreaker first, and then get the mission to go back to the landing site on the original planet that lets him access. What he needs. Uh. You guys there? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've just got nothing to say about Outer Worlds. I'm not touching that game. Pass. Yeah, it basically is just corporations are evil. The game. I'm gonna assume Pink is dead because this is his topic and he's not taking it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I think Pink's I... dead right now. Okay. Pink. Pink was dead. Yes. I'm alive. Oh, Pink's back. Take it For away. now. For now. Yeah. I kind of took over his topic. Oh, no problem. I really didn't have much else to say outside of the story that I didn't find to be all that gripping. Because mm. gameplay aspects is very similar to Fallout. Uh, yep. Probably 4 and New Vegas as well. Yep. It feels ve very familiar, so I haven't noticed any big changes with that. Uh... I either took a perk or didn't upgrade one part of the whatever they're calling the special thing now. So a point where basically my bonus and critical uh, damage is negated. So I don't get bonus damage for doing headshots, which was a big mistake because I've been spending most of my time in hiding in bushes and getting headshots. So I was like, oh, that, that was a bad choice. <laughs> I wonder how I'll be able to talk my way out of this one. I only accidentally shot those five people in the head. <laughs> <laughs> I love how, like, RPG logic says headshots don't count until you're, like, skilled enough to have your bullets, like, <laughs> do damage. Better. You, as a person, are not upgraded enough to a point where your bullets will be effective against this man. Try again. <laughs> The commercial, yeah, you can very... have the thing of, this guy is too experienced. This guy has seen too much shit to die from just three bullets to the head. You're gonna need <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's still a better system than fucking Paul. Which is another Obsidian game. Better than and what? honestly, they're best. The best Obsidian game. Which, which one? one? Uh, Alpha Protocol. Alpha Protocol? It's the I best honestly RPG don't think I've ever heard of that. Made. It's the best RPG ever made, but the gameplay mechanics suck so much that it's such a pain to get through. Oh, that, that RPG, sounds accurate. The RPG mechanics are absolutely incredible. It is single-handedly the best RPG game I have ever played. It just sucks to play. Because, ah. like, basic... Okay, so... Your skill points in, like, guns determine whether you can, like... They determine your accuracy. Which is absolutely terrible when you're, like, personally aiming the weapon. And I know Fallout does that, too, to some extent, but, like, not to the extent Alpha Protocol does it. Like, you legitimately cannot hit your bullets until you're, like, fairly high level in your skill. <laughs> like... You can go up little... to him, shoot him point blank, but all those bullets oh, no, are going no. to miss, regardless of reality. Up, if you go up point blank, you still cannot hit them. Yep. <laughs> like, the circle takes up, like, 50% of the screen. You know what this is reminding that's me how, of? That's how fucking wide the, like, accuracy spray is. You know it's what's really bad. 
You know what this is reminding me of? What? Vampire What's the Masquerade. <laughs> I mean, why would you play Vampire the Masquerade with guns? That's a good like, question. Like, guns are actually worthless in that game. Well, I mean, if you want to make it clear that you're... If you don't want to make it clear that you're a vampire... <laughs> I'm just saying, a guy pops up ripped in half with someone's bare hands. People are going to be like, hey, hang on. <laughs> Something this, fishy's going on here. This, this guy must have been doing a lot of meth, or... <laughs> the, the big problem with that is that, like, you're probably going to be fighting mostly vampires, and vampires, like, take no damage from bullets. Uh, are they weak to silver bullets? No, that's werewolves. I knew I knew werewolves were, but I wasn't sure if vampires were. No, the only gun that's worth anything is like the machine gun that you get from that one mission with the prostitute in the hotel. Well, that just says a lot about Vampire the Masquerade, doesn't it? Ah, <laughs> 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 <sighs> all right. You played Outer Worlds. What else, Pink? Uh, I played a lot of Civ with you. I did a lot of editing with Civ. I I did something else. Oh, I yesterday or probably Thursday, I want to say not Thursday, Wednesday, because I it was one day I was playing two K twenty with my siblings. We crashed the game. <laughs> okay, that that just seems part of part for the course. I mean, are you playing 2K20 if you don't crash the game at least, like, twice? Well, it seems, the only, it seems the only way not to crash the game is just to not play the game, so... Yeah, I, I felt that way. I was, <laughs> I was fiddling around in my universe last night and, you know, crashed several times, so that was upsetting. And at one point, I went to continue through my universe... I was loading into it, and I went to play a match. And despite despite that match being your normal, typical, everyday match, I soon realized about 10 minutes in that I could not go for a pinfall. So I tried to go for a submission, <laughs> and I couldn't go for a submission either. Oh, I, I was like, what the heck? What's going on here? Let me check the rules. I pause the menu. It says, oh, you're, you're in a normal match. I'm like, okay. I keep going a little bit longer, still can't do anything, so what the heck? I go into the rules options, check what's all turned on and off, and every win condition is turned off. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, I don't know what's going on, but that was a legitimate thing. I loaded into a normal match in my universe, that normal match had no win condition. Pinky, what are the, the what match are the is still one? going on now. Pinky, what are the worst one? What's worse than that? I've, I've seen that, but but with the with the freaking my career, so you you literally can't even lose it because <laughs> the game resets the match. Oh man! Oh my gosh! All right, who was in that match? It was Becky Lynch and Sasha Banks. All right, I guess Vince was just like, "Well, they want no one's wrestling. You go give it to me. Hey, <laughs> go have a revolution." <laughs> That's the next five years. Like, eventually the crowd disperses and the camera just cuts to them fighting in the parking lot. <laughs> I mean, that's happened. <laughs> like, that, that happens, that happened a lot in, like, 2010 to 2012 with, like, Fall Counts Anywhere matches. Mm. Well, yeah, but I don't think it just didn't end. Oh, no, it did. Re you remember, uh, wasn't it Jack Swagger versus Rey Mysterio that just never ended? And they, like, ended up, like, fighting on the beach or whatever. I've never heard of such a thing. Hang on. I, I still remember this. I'm pretty sure that match just never ended and they just ran away from the beach. I feel like I remember it. I don't know who the participants were. I feel like I, re I remember there would be, like, a, a, it was either a Swagger or Edge or someone like that. With blonde I hair, I guess. I remember them being, like, <laughs> out on the beach. And I don't think they ever came back. That'd be really dumb on the beach, because, I mean... Oh, yeah, Jack Swagger just went and took a swim. Like, he ended up going out into the fucking ocean. And that's how <laughs> SmackDown ended. What? Uh, shoot, I'm not in... I'm not in Discord. 
uh, on my computer. This this sounds like this sounds like uh, the kind of thing that goes on like wrestle crap or something. Like you wouldn't believe this match happened. <laughs> like that time they had uh, what 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 was it? The the match of like who was it versus Hillary Clinton? Oh yeah, the, it was uh, Hillary Clinton versus. Barack Obama? Yeah. Barack Obama. Yeah. Whose or idea was, was that? Or it might have been... No, no, it was Hillary Clinton versus Barack Obama because that was back during, like, the Democratic... Where those two were the top contenders. Well, I, right. I remember that. That's one of the first pol political things I remember, that whole thing. But, like, wouldn't that have come around at a, at a time period where WWE was already, like, having a policy against inter intergender matches? Yeah. Uh, oh, but I wait. think Hillary you... Clinton was, No, Hillary Clinton wasn't like it was a dude in the Hillary Clinton suit, I think. Are we are we talk, talking about the freaking time when WWE had people dress up as Clinton and Obama and I forget who else. I think Ziggler was like the KFC man. Did that link work? No. Just copy that into your browser. I'm fine. I defuse. The I can't do that in the middle of the podcast, sorry. But the fucking that was de that yeah, was definitely well, a different time period. Ziggler dress dressing up as KFC was fairly recent. Yeah, it yeah. ends up with like Jack Swagger swimming in the ocean, and then Kane comes up and choke slams Rey Mysterio on the beach. But they're on sand. <laughs> that wouldn't that, hurt. That's got to be a painful bump. Well, the, the worst the worst part would be getting sand oh, down no, your he pants. Throws, he throws Ray he choke slams Rey Mysterio into the ocean. <laughs> That's even, <laughs> that's a shittier bump. <laughs> like, Kane was just walking. Kane was just was just walking down the beach, dude, 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 dude. I hope Rey Mysterio didn't like. He shouldn't have sold it. He shouldn't have oh, this must have been like right after uh, Undertaker was found comatose. Oh Maybe. God, I rem I don't remember that angle, this but I've heard 2000, about it. 2010. Yeah. It was around the same time the Nexus was just debuting. Oh, God. And th is right, this what yeah. led to Jack Swagger picking up the title? Yep, so that he could yep it is. So that he could then drop it to Edge and then it would immediately be uh, vacated? Yeah. Oh, okay. This was right before I started watching. <laughs> I think the very first WWE show I watched was the first Raw after WrestleMania 27. Maybe. Oh, uh, was it the first Raw after WrestleMania 27 that Broken Cody Rhodes debuted? Uh, I want to say yes. I think Broken Cody Rhodes debuted at WrestleMania because... <laughs> He had his nose broken before Royal Rumble by Mysterio, and then yeah. they had their match at Mania. Yeah. So it had that to be all lines up. WrestleMania. I think it may have been the month before WrestleMania. Right. Cody Rhodes debuted. Okay, okay, yeah. Cause... The undashing. Yes, the undashing. undashing. Right, not broken. Broken was Matt Hardy, silly me. Right. Undashing. <laughs> Yes, yes, I definitely remember this. I want to say the first thing I've ever I ever saw on WWE television. I want to say I tuned in right when Undashing Cody Rhodes had got his payback on Ray. Okay, yeah, that would have been after WrestleMania, like when he attacked him at ringside or something like that. Hmm. So yeah, I I tuned in like right as the era came, like the not the era, excuse me. As the angle came around of like where Michael Cole was the biggest mark for Miz and he was using yeah, the anonymous yeah, yeah. GM to help him and all that. Yeah. Well, oh, that was so long ago. Shit. Yeah, that, that feels ancient by now. <laughs> it was eight years wow. ago. Wow. <laughs> eight and a half years ago, practically. Alright. That is a decent amount of time. <laughs> it is. So, uh... What about you, Addy? What have you been up to? Assuming that Pink's done. Oh, I think I'm done. done. Addy? Right. 
There yeah, I, I'm dead. <laughs> okay. But yeah, so. Let's yep. start with that one. I finished Neo. Okay, that's. Yes. That, okay, that correlates because I started Neo just before this podcast. The first Neo? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, any questions? <laughs> How bad was it? It was alright. Some parts were pretty bad. We both who sucks ass and so does Nue. I killed all of the freaking last island bosses first try somehow, and I don't know how. They weren't even that, like, I don't think they were supposed to be that easy. I think I just got so good with the Notachi at that point that I didn't notice that they were supposed to be hard. I think that's the Souls game structure. Like, you just, at some point, it all connects, and then you just run train on everybody. Yeah, the line of me wasn't... Yep. The line inside of me was, it was turned on, and then I was alive. Because <laughs> I closed my eyes. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. It has it, it has its moments. I liked... Um, well, I, I liked how Nob Nota Nobunaga is in the game as a boss. And if you beat him, he's like, What? You thought that was ev evil? No, I won't work for this freaking stupid-ass asshole. And he just walks out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to excuse me. I'm going to go die in a fire right now. <laughs> yeah, again. Because he's dead by this point and they resurrect him. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. But wait, you killed all of Nobunaga's minions. Like, but Nobunaga's like, yeah, psych. What do you mean Nobunaga's minions? Well, you killed it Yashiro. Depends. I have to assume you get the other Nobunaga type guys if you got Yashiro. Well, Yashiro is before Nob Nobunaga. Yashiro I is just... I understand absolutely none of this. That, that's Yoshi completely fair. Yeah. Well, you should know Oda Nobunaga. Yeah. He was remember he was the leader of Japan in Civ Five. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, evil, evil demon guy. <laughs> yeah, and one of his uh, samurai was a African guy who came with the European travelers, and they're making a movie about him. His name was Yashiro, mm -hmm. and they're making a movie about him starring Chadwick Boseman. But yes, yeah, so the thing with Yashiro is that. He's, from what I could tell, basically mind controlled or something by the evil dude in the game, Calais. What? <laughs> His name is Calais. Oh. Like, I think I think they pronounce it Kelly, but it's it has an additional A or E rather, so I say it as Calais. Okay. I've changed my ways, Calais, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I think he, because he's like this big demon dude. He's really into controlling people's minds and just doing doing bad magic, more or less. And so I think he mind controls Yashiro, and then when you kill Yashiro, he comes to his senses and he's just like, "All I wanted was for Nobunaga to make me a real samurai," and then he dies. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's kind it's kind of sad. And then and then you find Nobunaga who who is resurrected, fights you, and then goes, "You know what? Here, have my power. Kill this asshole," and then leaves. Is Kali the English wizard that you meet in the prologue? Yes. Okay, I was about to, I, I looked at him and I was like, well, there you go. There's the villain of the entire game. There's the villain of the entire game right there. Yep, it, it, it is Koei. <laughs> yeah, he is just yucking it up so hard throughout the prologue. Oh, we will manipulate the Japanese so we will get the, all the Amarita for the good of England. Oh... And actually, the final boss of the game is a demon Calais. Is it his stand? No. The final boss of Calais <laughs> is Elizabeth II. The final boss of Calais, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Elizabeth II. Did you say that right? I think you meant Elizabeth I. I did say the second, but I'm joking. The actual boss is Elizabeth I's right hand, I think. <laughs> Okay, now when you say Elizabeth the First right hand, do you mean Francis Drake, or do you mean, uh... Made-up guy. I'm, made pretty up. Sure, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Well, what's his Wait, name? What? I forget. I know that he, he he's called by the game, uh, he's called by a uh, freaking, like, a thousand eyes or something like that, because he turns into a big eye monster. Not Francis Drake and not John D. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> okay, I, I'm struggling to think of any other major Elizabeth in, like, 
Let me see if I can find his name. <laughs> so we can we can see if I'm just remembering just remembering his name and he's actually one yeah, of those Mata two. Yeah, no Orochi. No, that's the big big ass dragon. I would know that one. I also freaking knew that that was coming up Yamata no Orochi <laughs> when I fought him. You said the final boss, right? Yeah. Well, I consider it the final boss because it's it's in the freaking it's in the in the epilogue. So it's literally the last boss you fight. Well, if it's an epilogue boss, I mean, would you like when you say epilogue boss? Do you mean like tearing apart the pieces of of uh, what's her name at the end of Bayonetta? Oh, it's John D. It is John, John D. D. Okay, that's what okay. I was thinking. Yeah, John D. is not a fictional character, Addy. That is, he is was actually Elizabeth's uh, court wizard. I guess that's the proper term for him. Mm. So yeah, that guy. He's 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 what I consider to be the final boss because he's the last boss you fight. Okay. Yeah, the little bit of time I got with the game, it, it was, like, inherently weird just because it's it's a Souls game, but it tries to place itself in the real world. Yeah. Which is inherently in, it, in itself kind of weird. Like, I can accept historical fiction. I like historical fiction. But sometimes it goes a little nuts. And, like, the idea that there was a... That John D., the court wizard of Elizabeth, was creating big crystal demons with the crystals that he was stealing from Japan... And the entire Sengoku Basara, or not Sengoku Basara, excuse me, the entire Sengoku Jedi, the entire Sengoku Jedi was all manipulation by Elizabeth and the English to to steal more magic crystals from Japan. <laughs> like it, it, it's Metal Gear level stuff, you know. And I appreciate Metal yeah. Gear because Metal Gear is dumb and silly and hokey, but like it, it, it does immediately strike me as like this game. Seems like it shouldn't take itself as seriously as it does, but it takes itself really seriously. Yeah, the like uh, I actually really like the epilogue level because the epilogue level is the same as the first level, only you you're freaking wrecking everyone's shit because you don't know freaking kung fu. Okay, if it if it's a beat the beat the hell out of this big monster that's not really that hard fight, then you're I wouldn't count that as a final boss. That's a no. The boss is the boss is supposed to be the same same difficulty as everybody else. I'm pretty sure. The only thing that's supposed to be easier is that I don't think they raise the levels of the, like, random as father on the level. Maybe. So it, it it's not a victory lap, is what you're saying. The the actual level is a victory lap, the boss fight isn't. <laughs> okay. From what I could tell. Okay, alright. That, that makes more sense. I don't count victory lap bosses as final bosses. I actually had more, like... I had a bit of a bit of trouble because you you know Derek. Uh, Derek. Yeah, Derek, the executioner. Oh, oh, yeah, that one. Can I before we move on? Can I just point out that at, when I first beat Derek, that is such a good moment of like, really, that's the final boss of the first level. Like, <laughs> j just instantly killed him. Like, okay, sure, why not? Owned. Yeah, so so in the last level, Derek comes back and he's angry. I'm fine with that. I beat him the first. I, I beat him uh, the second time. So yeah, Derek wasn't hard, and then you get put with freaking Orioki, and Orioki is North City. Well, Orioki isn't that hard, but Orioki comes back with like freaking it, like the thing with Orioki, the boss of the first le first actual level, is that Orioki comes back like three times, and each time he gets more and more insta-kill. Okay. Yeah. And it's like, it's like, the thing is, like, Orioki isn't, isn't even, like, any harder. It's just that if you mess up, you're dead. Oh. It, it's not a thing of, it's not a thing of, Orioki now is more smart and shit. It's just, oh, you didn't time this dodge frame perfectly, so now all of your health is gone, and you, you have to do the fight all over again. Yep, also, all of your sounds... elixirs are freaking gone. That sounds like the the final boss of Blood. Oh. Really, I heard the uh, I heard the final boss of Bloodborne was stupid easy. What? Yeah. No, no, no. He's well, supposed to be. Well, one hang of the on, hang on. There are three final bosses in Bloodborne. Are you talking okay. about the Moon Spirit? Moon Spirit. 
Or, no, I'm talking about the uh, the guy. Oh, the, Garam the Hunter. Yes, I've heard Garamel on is a, a ball buster, but I heard the moon yeah, spirit. Garamel is honestly so fucking. But anyway, continue, Addy. So yeah, throughout the game, I feel like I have I've I had the most fun when I am actually fighting people, like non demon people, because <laughs> like the demons, the demons pose a challenge. And once you figure them out, you can just kill them easily. So that's that seems like par for the course with the Souls games. But some of the some of the human enemies, I mean, by, by which I mean the bosses, not the just random father. Some of the human bosses were actually fun to fight because even even though they mostly work the same as the the yokai, sometimes they do change things up. Like for example, Shiba Sakon. Shiba Sakon can suck my dick. Okay. <laughs> He has a freaking a move that can insta kill you. That I didn't. I I have fought him like four times now, beaten him most of the times. <laughs> <laughs> I fought him four times now, and I can't seem to find figure out if there's a freaking startup, like you know, because most of the bosses and the enemies have this long startup shit to let you know, hey, I'm doing a big move that will kill you instantly. Dodge, you idiot. He's from what I could tell, not at all. He just oh. starts spinning his stick, and then you're stunned, and then you die. Okay. Sometimes, sometimes I got lucky and got out of dodge distance, or got, got out of stun distance, rather. But when I'm out of, when you're out of stun distance, he can still dive kick you to death because the dive kick is oh. the deals the damage. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, although my Shiva Sakon, not really hard. It was actually, like, I'd say I had fun beating him once I figured out how the freaking the instant startup start stun shit works. And how I, I just shouldn't be near him even though I don't have any freaking good range to attacks. Because, you also have to remember, I was, I was running for the most part with a gun and a hand cannon. Guns have a lot of startup, hand cannons have, like, three times as more. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. Um, really, the one of our bosses, aside from Nue and Obibozu, well, well Obibozu was whatever, aside from Nue, were alright for the most part, and then the game, like, us, us your quote-unquote victory lap, I guess, through the, through the country, starts introducing double boss fights, where you uh. fight two bosses at the same time, because why not? <laughs> <laughs> and they don't behave any, any, in any, any way differently than they did when they were the normal bosses, so... That's fun. I I haven't been I haven't been able to beat those, but that's just because I'm level 115 and the missions are level 150. So I'm like 45 levels under what I'm supposed to be. Right. So yeah, um, the game gets the game like if you do all of the shitty freaking like tutorial missions, the game does get a lot easier on you. Cause for example. There are these things they introduced in the DLC that you unlock through the normal game somehow, called the Mystic Cards. Actually, they might have been in this base game. I don't freaking know. I never played the base game. But there are these things called Mystic Cards that are just like, well, I want to be a really good mage, so I put a lot of lot of points to, into on, onion magic, and then I just cast freaking magic instantly because I'm an anime character. <laughs> that sort of shit. Like those those things I liked. The combat was okay for the most part. I had my issues with it sometimes, but after I started uh, flipping between the Odachi and the uh, dual swords, it was okay. And yeah, the the story I <laughs> well, the story I liked the parts that weren't focused on William. <laughs> <laughs> so. Mm -hmm. Basically, most of the story that isn't the beginning or the end, because the the story of the game is just here's the Sengoku Kujidai, which I like because I'm a fan of the Sengoku Kujidai. And then the start and the finish of the game is William has lost his parry waifu, and now he's on he's on his path to revenge. I'm sorry. Yeah, fairy waifu, Sershe. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. Alright, you play anything else? Yeah, I also played a shitload of fighting games. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, 
How many? I actually don't remember most of them, so like two, three I, that I remember. Okay, fair enough. Why? Because I got an arcade stick and I want you to get good with the arcade stick. Oh, I see. Yes, right. I remember. Okay, instead of talking about the fighting game, let's the fighting games. Let's talk about the arcade stick then. Yeah. So soon, pig. Do, do y'all do y'all even know what an arcade stick is? Nope. I I've seen an arcade stick once before, maybe. So an arcade Wait, stick. An is, arcade. Yeah. An arcade, yeah, arcade stick. Arcade. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. I got one of those, a little small, small, like barely larger than the PS PS4 controller version. That that was really cheap because, well, I can't afford the big ones. And people said that this one was um, good for beginners who are coming, coming or who are new to the new to using arcade sticks with fighting games. And it's been weird for a, like it, it was weird for a couple of days, and now I'm doing combos that I wasn't able to do before. I'm not sure if it's the arcade stick or if it's just me doing doing a shit ton of fighting games in a, in a short amount of time, but <laughs> it might be the arcade stick. Yeah, because like I never did air combos in Marvel Three, and now I'm doing nothing but air combos in Marvel Three. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Freaking uh, who else? Uh, Potem Potemkin became easier, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah, the weirder input. Yeah. I also got better with with Kyo's dad, but then he's he's also like mostly just freaking health circles. All right, all right. Here's the appropriate question. Yeah. Pretzel. I did it. You can do the pretzel I, now. I probably wouldn't be able to do to do it um, consistently now because I didn't uh, practice it enough. But I did go into KOF ninety eight and went okay geese, <laughs> and so. I did do three pretzels consistently after each other. So <laughs> just gotta get practicing. Yeah, just gotta get practicing. But it, it is it is a lot easier. Yes, I, I like that. That's the way you test out a new fighting game controller. All right, let's find a game that has geese or rock Howard in it. All right, let's go. Weirdly enough, although I think that's just because of how the gauges work, I I couldn't do um, Hazabas pretzel input but that also made blue sucks so yeah that's fine nothing of value is lost anyways yeah aside from that let's see what else i did i feel like i did something all oh, right well um the arcade stick isn't just for fighting games. Well, it's supposed to be, but it's not only usable for fighting games. So, I fired up Mega Man. <laughs> <laughs> and Mega Man feels weird. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I was never a fan of Mega Man, so that's also, that, that's also a thing. But it just feels so freaking weird to control it that way. Right. I also fired up Contra. And all of my all of my skills immediately transferred somehow, <laughs> which is the weirder one. Yeah. Cause freaking why not? I guess. Yeah. And for some reason, Mega Man and Gojira work with the arcade stick. Metal Slug doesn't. Metal Slug refuses. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting choice. So yeah. But okay. Yeah. What is Soon doing over there? He's moving Montgomery. furniture. There's always something going on on Soon's side. Yeah. Holy Christ, did he throw his phone in the trash can? <laughs> he, he took his phone into the toilet, and that's what we're hearing right now. The audio quality <laughs> declines by the second. I'm trying to find my Xbox so I can play Nier Automata sometime. Ah, yes, okay. So... Because <laughs> playing who just wants... Tomino on the keyboard sucks. So who, just, who really wants to see that ass? Buddy. Oh, man. I have not played Soul Calibur 6 yet. I can also see that ass. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So... I also played the new Contra. Rogue Core. <laughs> 
You've already just played to... that, haven't you? Well, I played the demo, yes. But I also played the full game now, now that it's free for the weekend. And... Have you already uh... beaten it? No, it's... That's actually something I wanted to touch, touch on. It seems to be padding a lot. <laughs> that is exactly what I would expect. And I think the thing about Contra, the, the thing that I found fun in Contra, Contra's level design, rather, was that the game might not be the longest. It's like 40 minutes because it's eight, sta eight, eight shortish stages. But on, the, on those shortish stages, you get assaulted from every direction. <laughs> so... You know, the, the the levels, despite being short, are well designed and are a challenge. This game, levels seem to, like, that, that's also a thing that I've noticed with newer controls, by me, which I mean three, but <laughs> a lot of, like, it seems as time went on, the levels just got more and more draggy. And even worse is that since this game is not a running gun shooter, which, you know, like, it takes after the shitty controls, the PS2 ones. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's a twisted shooter, and yeah, it, it has its problems. It's, I think, like, 10 or so missions until, it's 8 or 10 missions until you get to the actual boss of the, of the level, so to speak. Okay. Yeah, and that's not good. But the one boss that I have fought, fought because that's that's all of the <laughs> that's all of the attention I could give the game. Oh, I was God. bored. Oh, but, no. yeah. So and you want us to play it? So here's the thing: I was bored because the game is like, unless I'm really misreading how the game is built, which is not well. But you know, <laughs> unless I'm really misreading how the game the game is built, it was built with with at least two plus players in mind. Okay. And I'm not two plus players, so. Yep, and that I could totally see that they just built it for co-op. That would make sense, yeah. So I might not be having a lot of fun, but who knows? Maybe we'll have fun at least shitting on it. Because here's the thing: Contra Row Core is not a bad game. It's just painfully mediocre. That is everything I've heard about it. Yeah, and so I was I was right with the demo because that's basically what I said for the demo as well. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope that I'm I'm not biased. <laughs> okay. I try not to be. I the the critic reviews definitely seem to also be like, yeah, it exists. It's a thing. Yeah. Although like the thing is, the presentation and the characters for the most part aren't really good. Well, for me, anyways, I don't, I don't like them. I think they're, well, I think the, the human people haven't been good since they announced or they since they added, um, like other, other characters. Cause like you know, do you want to be random ass freaking, or Schwarzenegger guy, or do you want to be, dog in sunglasses? Well, I mean, I think the choice is obvious. Yeah, and that's that's my point. They have two. Sadly, Fang is not in this game. Ah. Fang, Fang is in the Genesis game. But... The thing is, like, they added four characters to the... Or four new guys to the series with this. And two of them are humans, two of them are not. Well, one of them is Krang, so not really a human, but still. I, I call her Krang, but she's not really Krang. She's, I don't think she's supposed to be Krang, but she just looks the part. Yeah. So, yeah, the characters that we have are Kaiser, the guy I probably play, play as just because of, of the music, because his fight team is, is a remixed um, original Contra team, and yes, that's the, <laughs> that's the one part I like. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure, I, I feel like all of the characters' battle teams are remixed old, old tunes, but not of the one that I like the most, so <laughs> that's why I choose Kaiser. <laughs> He's just... Generic for the most part. He has he has a, a Nero arm. He has a drill arm that he can do, uh, or rather, everyone can do freaking insta kills with. Or how how can I freaking convey it? It's not really insta kills. It's more like dooms, uh, glory kills. Yeah, yeah. So there's those in the game. There's Mrs. Harakiri or Miss Harakiri. I forget who is Craig, female Craig. Yes. <laughs> There's Hungry Beast, 
Big Panda, who's also a scientist, also Pink's character, and there's Jungle Man. Literally, that's his name. He's, he's a bug. A bug dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, like, you know, now that I, told, I basically gave you a premise for all of the characters, what do you... Like, who are the most interesting ones? Obviously, the ones that aren't, aren't freaking human. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But, I mean... I the, the one thing, yeah, yeah. The one thing that the game's story, or I guess the game, or I don't freaking know, has going for it is that the game is not taking it as, it's as seriously. At Doesn't least there's have that. that going for it. Nothing. I don't itself, know. Nothing takes itself seriously anymore. That's true, but I mean, the thing is, like, you have to, you have to consider that you have to consider Contra's freaking story. <laughs> It can't not. It can't not take itself seriously at this point. Well, the first one did. The first one did, but then it just went on. <laughs> I actually don't know about the first three games stories. I'll need to read up on them again. But I do know that by the fourth game, it, it just got so convoluted that you can't not take it 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 not seriously. Yeah. So yeah. Kotaro Core is a game. Maybe we'll have fun with it. <laughs> I'm doubtful. <laughs> All right. I mean, hey, yeah, yeah. You do anything else this week? Let me check. I don't think so. Because I've spent uh, freaking whatever time I spent uh, not doing fighting game shit or Kotaro Core, I spent freaking. All oh, right, that sells. I played that sells with the arcade stick because obviously. <laughs> Yeah, actually, actually easier. That's that's all of my own comments on that. All right. So right. yeah. So what have you done, Alex? I'm gonna try and speed things up because I'm getting very tired of sitting on my ass here. So, <laughs> all right, I went back into Bloodborne because I felt like it. I realized I felt oh, an odd sense of shame from the fact that I've never been able to beat the cleric beast by myself. The only time I was ever able to beat it, it was by calling soon in for the assist. <laughs> I had to tag out. It, it was the hot tag right there. And then soon came in and he did the whole five moves of doom on him. The whole what? The five I'm moves of out. doom. <laughs> I beat the cleric beast. Took a long fucking while. Let me tell you. Nice. That, bo that boss does not have a distinct weakness, which makes him an oddball among Dark Souls bosses, I think. But I beat him. I'm making progress in the game. I actually really enjoy Bloodborne. I just keep getting stuck at certain parts. <laughs> you know how there are some games where you just come back every other year? And it's like, you can feel yourself getting better, but it's just at a really slow rate. I actually feel the opposite most times. I go back to games that I played as a kid, and I'm like, holy shit, I'm so bad at this now. What kind of fucking supernatural gaming prodigy was I when I was like 10? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, I have to let stuff settle into my brain. It, it takes me like a, a, I gotta take like a night off before I can get better at a game. It can take me like weeks or even months. Like the longer I go without playing the game, the better. The best Rainbow Six Siege session I've ever had is the most recent one we've played because I hadn't played it for like months before. So, uh, do you also use um, freaking muscle memory for the most part? Yeah. Yeah, that that's your that's your problem, <laughs> W. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm going off of knowledge here. the The thing I figured out about Bloodborne that I should have figured out at the time, boy, uh, guns parrying. It's important. And yeah, yeah, very. Yeah, one thing I just want to note real quick. Obvi obviously, parrying is important for these Souls games, but I love the way that Bloodborne does parrying. Because you know how you parry people in Bloodborne? How? You shoot them in the face. You shoot them oh. in the face. <laughs> and it's the most fantastic thing. Because I'll have this big troll-looking son of a bitch. Pink, by the way, you're dead if you've said anything in like the last half hour. We haven't heard you. But you'll, yep. have, you'll have this Pink big... Pink is very dead. You'll have this big troll-looking guy charging up on you. And you just stare him with dead eyes as he charges up to you. And right as he's about to hit you... You continue to stare at him dead-eyed, and you just pull your pistol and shoot him in the face. Like, oh, it's just so good. 
And now I'm stuck at the next boss, Father Gascoigne. I'll see you next year, Bloodborne. Other than that, I haven't done much. I started, uh, I started Black Lightning, the TV show. I'm enjoying right. it. The, has anyone else watched it? No, nope. I've watched the first few episodes. It's it's a strange series, isn't it? Yeah, it's CW taking a shot at like doing Marvel's Daredevil or Luke Cage or what have you. Yeah, but it's still CW in a lot of ways, and you can tell that with a lot of the ways they handle things, like with melodrama and your kind of typical teen arcs. But at the same right. time, it, it is definitely more mature than Flash or. Arrow, which is to its benefit. And yeah. The lack of over the top sci fi effects means that you don't have to wor- you don't have to worry about the cheapo CG that CW shafts flash with, so mm-hmm. it's got that going for it at the very least. I think the characters are actually pretty fun. I'm having a good time with the series. I think it, it it's Black Lightning is a strong main character and I think his supporting cast is generally pretty good. The wife's, you know, iffy. But Tobias Whale is a really good villain. Which I would not expect because my knowledge of him in the comics was that he was just a boring mob boss who fights Batman every now and then. <laughs> but he's a really fun villain because he's just an intimidating mob boss who does horrible things to people. Right. Like, Kingpin, if Kingpin didn't have a moral code and was also a massive sadist... The way he executes people is by feeding them to a tank of piranhas. Nice. My favorite bit is one of his minions comes in after they've screwed up. And they're just walking into the office and they're doing the whole thing of, I swear, boss, it'll never happen again. And, like, they're doing the whole thing. And Tobias Whale is just casually, he's lounged at his desk. He's got both of his feet kicked up on the table. You know, he's picking shit out of his fingernails. And he just looks under his desk and still just casually lounging on his desk. Pulls out a a harpoon gun, and with the most utter like l- nonchalant, just shoots him in the shoulder with a harpoon. That sounds like such a James Bond villain. He is Tobias Whale is a James Bond villain. It's fantastic because we don't we don't get James Bond villains anymore. We don't. It's why I love him. Technically Despicable Me, I guess, was like a parody of James Bond villains. Yeah, for a generation that wouldn't even understand the reference. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, and they do one, one thing I just want to note that's fantastic. Tobias Whale is not the top mob boss. He's got another woman that he is working for. And he goes to a meeting with her, and she's telling him about how he's screwed up. And they're at a morgue, and she's cutting open a body, right? And she's like right. dressed like a mortician in the whole routine. And it's just going through this routine of her, you know, reading the riot act at Tobias Whale. And the creepy thing is that she's doing all this while cutting open a body. And she still has a big smile and everything. She's acting very polite about her cutting open a corpse. And, you know, that's just creepy on its face, you know? And you think right. that's, mm-hmm. that's plain just what they're going for. She's a mortician who's very happy about her job in a creepy way. And then the camera cuts to the face of the corpse she's cutting open. And it blinks and it gasps. And yeah. that that that's a good moment. That's a good villain moment right there. You thought they were doing one creepy thing, but it was actually even worse. <laughs> oh God, the dog has decided. All right, uh, quick, soon. Mention what your experience with Bloodborne. My experience with Bloodborne. I beat it and it sucked, and that's it. I beat it twice, actually. Because uh, I needed the platinum. And it sucked. And it sucks. That's it. Yeah, you, you see, I, I mean, I'm at a point with Neo where I basically, I probably have to go through most of the levels again just to get leveled up enough to get to, to freaking buy, find Dr. Masamune. <laughs> and I need to find Dr. Masamune so I can become him. Okay, I am back. The cat. I did All right. get the platinum in Bloodborne, right? Pretty sure I did. I'm pretty sure you did, yeah. I... But you didn't get the true ending. If you didn't, if you didn't know what the Moon Spirit is, you didn't get the true ending. No, I got the true ending. Oh well, you seemed confused when I mentioned the Moon Spirit. Yeah, I forgot about it, honestly. Yeah, I always heard that he was bizarrely easy compared to Garmon. I just like think of Garamel as like the final boss. Like the Moon Spirit isn't the final boss. 
Do you have to fight Germán even if you do summon the Moon Spirit? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I, I guess he would count then. If if the Moon Spirit isn't that hard, then I guess he'd just kind of be a victory lap. Yeah. But yeah, I want. I want to mention one thing. I did play the first level of Neo because Addy wants us to do a playthrough of it. I'm not exactly sure why. The it, it's there are some strong points to the Souls games. The combat feels very impactful, and Neo see, feels a lot more limp-wristed, a lot more action RPG, a lot of swinging at each other and numbers fly out. You get what I mean? Hmm. Oh, apparently they're adding a new map for Joust into Smite next year. Ah, they do that pretty much every other year. Yeah, it'll be it'll still be like Chinese, but it'll be like much darker. That's what they've been doing for all the maps. But anyway, keep going. Yeah, it, it Neo doesn't quite feel as good to me as a proper Souls game. Mm. Though I've like I said, I only completed the opening level. And the opening level overall seems very awkward for a first level. Yes, right. I can I, I can say that that is probably right. Right. But particularly because you're going expecting a, a samurai game, and you're expecting to start off with some samurai action. No, you're a hobo with a sword trapped in an English dungeon, shitbird. Oh, no, that's not the first level, dude. That's that's the tutorial. Really? Because once I completed that first level, it asked me if I wanted to do the tutorial, and I said no. Yeah, there's a separate tutorial if you want, if you want more tutori tutorialization, but that's supposed to be the tutorial for the most part. Huh. The, the actual first level is Isle of Demons. <laughs> oh, so I need to get past the entire first island? No, it's, it, that's just what it's called. Oh. That's, the, that's, what, that's the name of the first level, level, Isle of Demons. Is there a certain boss that once I beat it, I'll unlock co-op? Orioki. Orioki, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll beat him later. <laughs> I will say one thing that weirds me out about Neo is I'm used to Dark Souls and Bloodborne keeping everything a secret and it's all a big mystery and all the information you get is super vague. Neo does not do that. Neo lays the cards out on the table immediately. Hey, you're an English guy who's in trouble. You're in prison. Go to Japan. All right. Well, sure. He's not even he's not even English. It, he he's very very much just freaking samurai Edward Kenway. He's a he's a Welsh pirate. Because of Samurai. Okay. Alright, alright. That makes sense. I'm not particularly impressed with the combat right now. I, it just kind of seems like discount souls, you know? The, f the first level has, has you locked to the mid stance. There's, three, there's two more stances after that. I, I, yeah, I did see that. I did play just a little bit of the Isle of Demons, but not very far. Ah, uh, yeah. Which weapons did you choose? Katana. You, you have to... Katana? Yeah. Oh, mid-level heavy is the only good move from what I could tell from fighting people who use katanas. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll be able to make anything with anything. Souls is all Souls games are all about mixing it up. Which, by the way, can I just say, even if I come around to disliking Bloodborne like soon here, that cane, the threaded cane, has got to be one of my favorite weapons in all video games. It's a cane that turns into a chain whip. I love it. Anyway, it's a cool design, but like it also isn't very good. It's fantastic. What are you talking about? I remember it being fucking terrible. Well, it doesn't deal very much damage, but it's got crazy range. Yeah, that's true. You can you can get through the entirety of the first two four the first two phases of the Gascoigne fight. You can just cheese with whip because you can hit Gascoigne through the tombstones and he can't hit you back. Right, I think that's maybe what I did the first time. I might have used the whip, just like wrecked. Yeah, and then he switches to his third phase, in which case, get fucked. <laughs> no, well, I, I like squashed him the first time I played him. I literally did. Ooh. Boss. You took the chain whip the first time? I don't remember what I took, but I beat him like so easily that I thought he was just a man. That's that's strange. A lot of people have a hard time with Gascoigne. The thing is, like, the second time I went through, I did have a very hard time with him. Oh, interesting. So I don't know what I was doing the first time. Like, 
I guess I just thought that he wasn't a boss and was like super confident. Like, I'm not losing, so I won it. Are parries important? It was. I didn't parry. Okay, you didn't parry him. All right, that, that that's one tip that helps me along. Anyways, yeah, I'll go ahead and wrap things up just so we don't end up with a three-hour podcast. Let's see, uh, two hours and 30 minutes. <laughs> Can't think of anything else I did this week, or at least nothing else that's interesting. Oh, you know what? You know, I'll just go ahead and note this. I'm continually working on my own CAW Universe in WWE 2K19, and God, I hate working on attributes. Why yeah. That? I just sort of randomly slide that every which way and hope for the best. <laughs> well, then you end up with jobbers on top and main eventers on the bottom. I'll take a pass on that. <laughs> Zack Ryder is WWE champion. What? I always made Zack Ryder WWE champion when I was playing. Why? Because I liked Zack Ryder. I love Zack Ryder. He is not a but. He is not anything better than a like. He is a mid card title chaser. He he's your internet champion though. We uh, we offended Alex Pink. <laughs> we offended his sensibilities. I don't even have a problem with him. Like uh-huh. I'm fine with him as a mid card guy. I'm fine with him as a jobber certainly, but I'm also fine with him as a mid card guy. <laughs> but main event. I'm fine as, with him as a main eventer guy. So fuck you. He's a putz. I mean, come on now. Back in 2011, when The Rock was in the ring, and The Rock didn't get in the ring very often, the universe was chanting, we want Ryder. Yeah. I think that speaks volumes for his star power. Fuck the universe. They also chant... What? They also chant for... I don't know. Who do they chant for now? Well, they chant... Yeah, Punk. Well, now they're not going to chant for Punk anymore. I can tell you that. (laughs) Now they're going to chant for Kenny Omega. Or Cody Rhodes. And I love, no, Cody, like I, I love Cody Rhodes, but AEW means fuck Cody Rhodes. <laughs> Cody Rhodes, like, owns AEW, doesn't he? He doesn't, own, so. he doesn't own it, but he's one of the big guys. Yeah. Him, Kenny Omega, and the Young Bucks. I feel, I feel like one of the worst things to happen to wrestling is Kenny Omega, at least in recent times. Yeah, him and Young Bucks, definitely. I mean, the worst thing to happen to wrestling in recent times, is still Steve Austin. Yep. Like, there, there's a multitude of problems here, up to including, like, Steve Austin making it where no face could ever be anywhere near the idea of establishment. Or even, like, a, an actual good guy. Now every face needs to be a heel. Right. Yep. Like, we're, we're never gonna have, like, a whole Hogan again. I mean, we have John Cena. Well, yeah, but the fans hated him until he retired. Yeah. And I mean, I don't know who to blame. I don't know who to blame with the amount of spot fests. Like that—that's a multitude of factors. Like we can partially blame Kevin Nash for making it seem like they were, you know, uh, what what's the word? Held down, I guess. Like Kevin Nash was the originator of the Vanilla Midgets line, right? Yes, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Nash is kind of at blame for that. WWE is also kind of at blame for that because they have deliberately tried to make it look like they don't build little guys for, like, decades now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Which, at the time... Might Despite have been... their golden boy, Shawn Michaels, being, like, 5'11", 205 pounds. Yep. <laughs> oh, let's not forget their other golden boys, Daniel Bryan, Bret Hart. <laughs> How tall is Bret Hart? Bret Hart can't be more than a couple inches taller than Sean. Bret, Bret Hart can't can be taller than a couple of inches. I mean, if we're just talking in terms of pure height, well, we can't just talk in terms of pure height, obviously. If we're talking in terms of pure height, Cena is only six foot one. Like, right. Bret Hart, build height, six feet, no inches. Yeah, but only, between, between only Sean and Gene. Between Sean and Cena, yeah. Yeah, ugh, just so much in wrestling that is disgusting. Yep. All right, so closing out the podcast now? Yep. All right, Addy, say bye. Or don't say bye. That's cool, too. Yep. We'll see you later, folks.